get one before his career is over in Champaign-Urbana. And, of course, the Illini defense will have its hands full tonight. Hawaii's Rainbow run a spread offense. It's a little bit different. You're going to enjoy watching it. Bob Wagner, their head coach, says it all is centered around the quarterback. No question about it. We've had three different quarterbacks do it very well. Two of them were more, a little more pass-oriented, weren't as good of runners. Like Carter is an is outstanding running option and is a better passer than people give me credit for. But the quarterback uh, is, is really the key. Well, he's the key because it, it's a different offense than you've really ever seen before, and the quarterback has to make it go. You remember the wishbone. We've seen it. You run the ball inside. Well, not this wishbone. There's no tight end. There's no three backs in the backfield with the old wishbone run the ball up the middle. This is going to feature four wide receivers split all over the field. They call this formation the stack, and the quarterback might hand it to the fullback or throw it to a wide receiver, or we might even see a what? A double pass in a wishbone offense? This is going to be fun, and Eli and I are going to have to stop a very tough offense. Strength against strength, a stingy Illini defense, a rainbow warrior offense that was number eight in the country in scoring. We get set for Hawaii and Illinois, and the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl is next. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl, presented by Chrysler, is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-4-CARS. And by the Chrysler Corporation. In the car business, you lead, follow, or get out of the way. San Diego, California. Lou Tepper, this is his second bowl game, his first game as head coach of the Illini was a year ago in the John Hancock Bowl. And now he comes in against the Warriors of Hawaii. Ten and two on the season. This is the 15th Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl. They've all been great ones. Charlene Hawks has seen a lot of those exciting ball games. Charlene? Brad, this is my seventh trip to the Holiday Bowl, five times down here on the sideline. And from personal experience, I know exactly why it's billed America's most exciting bowl game. In its 14 years, ten games were decided by seven points or less seven games by less than a field goal. And what talent I've seen here. I remember in 1983 as BYU Steve Young ran the ball in for a touchdown with 23 seconds left to win the ball game just by, uh, by four. And in 1988, Barry Sanders putting an exclamation mark on his Heisman Trophy season with 222 yards rushing and five touchdowns. So in the past, I've been very entertained by the Holiday Bowls here, and I fully expect to again today. Brad? All right, number 15, just about set to kick off for... The Rainbows of Hawaii, as we said, 10-2. and two. Lou Tepper, 6-5-1. And, and, of course, that fifth loss is from last season's Hancock Bowl, a 6-3 setback to UCLA. But fifth straight bowl game for the Fighting Illini. And, of course, Brad, Lou Tepper is known as a coaching genius defensively. 17 years as a defensive coordinator. Colorado came to Illinois under Magovic and, you know, really built his reputation as a defensive coach. And when we talked to him, he says, I'm going to have to find some more offense in 1993. And when you finish 10th in the Big Ten, I can see understand why. Bob Wagner on the other side for Hawaii. It is sixth year, 44 wins, 27 losses, a couple of ties. And what a turnaround from a year ago. The biggest jump in Division 1A football from last season's 4-7-1 to a 10-2 mark this year. And I really love the offense. It fits his system there because he gets the type of kids that can move around and operate in space. So he really has an advantage. Also, most teams don't have time to prepare for a different offense like this. Jason Verdusco warming up for Illinois. There's what he's done in the last three games, and he'll have his offense on the field first. Two quarterbacks, Brad, very similar, gutsy players, play injured, play tough. You know, you got to love Verduzco. He never says anything about but pulling back and winning the football game is all he really cares about. And this guy is tough and runs the option as well as anybody. You'll see he's a magician with the football. We'll see an All-American tee it up for Hawaii as they'll kick off to Illinois. Jason Elam, one of the best kickers in the country. Not only a first-team All-American kicker, a third-team All-American punter. How valuable will he be in the NFL next year? Well, you have to consider the possibility that they may shrink the roster sizes in the NFL, and guys like him, I, I think he's a second- or third-round pick. Uh, we, you know, I saw Jason Hansen kick for the Lions this year, and he's that type of kicker. The 
Rainbows are ready to go. Illinois huddling at midfield before dropping back to receive. The Illini fourth place in the Big Ten this year with a 4-3 and 1 conference mark. But as we said, down the final month of the season, three wins and a tie against highly ranked Michigan has them in this game. And Steve Fagan drops back deep. Jason Elam's got the go-ahead around his special teams. And the 15th Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl set to get underway from San Diego. High kick Fagan from the nine. Spins across the 20 to the 23-yard line. And that's where the Illini defense will go to work. As we take a look at the fighting Illini offense, Jason Verdusco, seventh all-time in Big Ten passing with Boyer and Fagan. Up front, John Wright, his leading receiver, 40 catches. Jim Klein and Dave Olson join the receiving core. Brad Hopkins, this is the fifth bowl game he's been to, a fifth-year senior and an All-American candidate, a Big Ten first-team performer, and already we've got some fireworks. Hopkins joined by Pesek, Engel, Kerr, and Bierman, and we had a fight after the kickoff return. Well, it was a little dangerous there for a second. Both squads were heading onto the field, but uh, cooler heads prevailed. You know, when you got a three-and-a-half-hour game, you can't spend it all on the first play. <laughs> Both these teams itching to get at it as we ran into a lot of the players today. Here's the call. Big ball foul. Personal foul on the kicking team. Automatic first down. The personal foul on the kicking team, Hawaii. Well, it's hard to figure out how they can single out one guy who caused it. Maybe the guy's a hockey referee in the offseason. You know, he figures those things out easily that way. You know, night games, it, it is. You do get a little chippy. You can't wait for the game to start because the day is too long. That is true. Coaches always squeeze in one more meeting that way. That's right. So a break for Illinois. Better field position working from the 38-yard line. Verduzco wants to throw on first down and fires it complete to right, his favorite receiver. And his forward progress should get him about 10 and a half yards and a first down. Darrell Green knocked him out of bounds, a pickup of 11. Defensively, for the Rainbows of Hawaii, their leader, a senior, Ma'a Tanavasa, with Faumui and Tagawai up front in the three-man set. Alipule, Williams, Randall, and the bandit back is Santiago. Kind of a combination defensive back linebacker. The secondary, Henderson, Odom, Green, and Brian Addison, who leads the team with four interceptions. One play and one first down, Illinois, at the 49-yard line. Steve Fagan. Got about three. Brian Addison came up from the secondary to help on the tackle, along with Santiago, that rover back. I think what we have seen here with Illinois is a comfort level between Tom Beck, offensive coordinator, and Jason Verduzco. You know, with John McAvick here the year before, they wanted to throw the ball. This year, they wanted to establish the run, but Jason Verduzco wanted to establish winning. That's right. And he said, I don't mind running the ball, but I want to mix it up just a little bit, and I think they started off well. Both guys gave a little bit. Fagan on a pitch on second and seven, and boy, did he get tagged. Tanavasa got over there to help on the hit. Also, Brian Addison, and that's really going to be a key in this football game. Number 22, the free safety, Brian Addison, is the leading tackler on this football team. Tom Beck said he would like to take advantage of that and hit him with some play-action passes. There you see right there, Fagan takes the ball, and number 22 is going to come up and knock him backwards, and that's really a trademark of Hawaii defense, is game tackling and pursuit. Addison got the big hit. It was Tanavasu who had him low. They're the top two tacklers for the Rainbows. Let's see who tackles Illinois on third and four. Verduzco. In the middle, almost intercepted by Santiago. He got a hand on it. That wasn't much room in that little scene that Verduzco tried to put it in. Gary. And that's really what the strength of Jason Verduzco is. He has no fear of throwing it into those little holes. Playing zone defense, Hawaii is not a great man-to-man -man coverage defensive team. And Santiago, that type, just reads Verduzco's eyes and makes a wonderful play on the pass. Corey Wells is a guy that will punt for Illinois anytime they're outside midfield, as you saw him standing on his own 40. And Derek Branch has one touchdown this year. He's back deep for Hawaii. Illinois was 
going to take the five-yard penalty. Branch, gutsy catch at the eight-yard line, but he does something with it. Got about ten on the return. Boy, that showed that he's not afraid to run in traffic. Gutsy when they work and really, really ridiculous when they <laughs> That's don't. Right. Let's take a look at the Rainbow's offense. Travis Sims, almost 1,500 yards, six in the country in rushing. Michael Carter is the quarterback. They don't throw often when they do. It's Derek Branch, who you just saw on the, the uh, punt return. 25 catches on the year. But Wheat Gordon and Kale Oha join him. In the spread offense, Fonseca, the left tackle, is a good one. Pale, Omoso, Violetti, and McGill join him. And it's first down, Hawaii. Just inside their own 19-yard line. Immediately, it's going to be a first down, and then some. Eddie Kealoha, 14 yards, first down, Hawaii. Penalty is, marker down. This is something very interesting with this offense that Hawaii uses. It's an unbalanced line. You're going to see a shovel pass, first play of the game. Both teams come out, open, wide open game, very typical of this bowl game. KLO is the second leading rusher and third leading receiver on this football team. Very safe pass. And you know, when you're completing 40% of your passes, Brad, it's nice to start out with one of these gimmies for a completion. I guess in great field position now as an injured rainbow player down near where the first down was achieved. And now the penalty is going to walk it off further out near midfield as we take a look at the Fighting Illini defense, anchored by Eric Fogey, the only senior starter on that front wall with Cole and Kofer. The linebacking core, we've already mentioned him. Dana Howard led the club with 138 tackles. Holosek, Hardy, and Leach join him. And in the secondary, the man that pulls it all together is Jeff Arneson. His leadership holds that defensive secondary together, says Lou Tepper. He joins Washington, Johnson, and Crumpton. It was Derek Branch, the wide receiver, trying to throw a block that was shaken up. He's okay, and the penalties moved it all the way out to the 48-yard line. You mentioned Arneson as being key. He's also the key in reading play-action passes in this football game. He cannot get burnt. He has to read through the open lineman to the quarterback and come up only on running plays. Here's the pitch. They want to throw on the option. Jasper going deep. Man out there, almost intercepted. You said we might see a little hoopty doo and some double passes so we get an option pass right off the ball. Well, back. Ivan Jasper was the starting quarterback when this season began. He's, you know, he's only completed 35% of his passes, but he has four touchdowns, and he may line up anywhere in this thing. I'm not so sure that that wasn't a fake injury coming out of the game so they could put the quarterback in there to throw the halfback pass. I always like to predict these after they have. That's right. You know, Derek Branch is back in the huddle, though. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> kind of an interesting way to keep the game open and move those linebackers off the line of scrimmage for Illinois. Second down at 10. Simeon Rice has checked in defensively for Illinois. Unbalanced line again. Now they switch into a double wing setup. Carter keeps it. And got about five. It'll be third and five. Michael Kevin Hardy made the tackle. Brad, it's a little bit of a, a chess match here between Paul Johnson and defensive coordinator Denny Marson. There you see Paul Johnson in the middle, the architect of this spread offense. He's going to try to outnumber the defense by moving his formations back and forth with unbalanced lines and really just try to outnumber them, counting six and five on one side or the other. Denny Marson said that John Holosek, the linebacker, is going to be calling a lot of audibles on defense to counteract them. You don't miss Denny on the sideline, do you? <laughs> <laughs> He's a beauty. Third down at five. the first down got it near the 40 got hit by Holosek and Dana Howard but again a marker down Fred I don't think Derek Branch number 87 came to a full stop for a second before the man went in motion that's why they got the illegal procedure call so it negates a first down pickup what you love about Michael Carter is this is a guy who's a running back, really playing quarterback right now. He's got an adequate arm for option football, but no sliding for this guy. He and I have about as much in common as a, you know, a singer and I. You know how well I sing. You only know one song. <laughs> the Lion Sleeps Tonight, isn't that That's it? right. That's why I love There's him. a good look at Michael Carter. He's 200 and about 15 pounds. He's maybe 5'10". Well, I did him twice last year versus Iowa against Notre Dame, and he was impressive against Notre Dame. Iowa really bottled him up pretty well. Third down at 10. There's 
the third down conversion for Hawaii this season. A lot of calls at the line of scrimmage for Hawaii. Timeout. As even the Rainbows may have been a bit confused by their call or the Illini defense. 11 minutes, 19 seconds to go first quarter. And the 15th Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl scoreless early. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl presented by Chrysler is brought to you in part by Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know. Call 1-800-HOLIDAY or your travel agent for reservations. And by Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. Well, SeaWorld was a splash this week for the teams as they had a good time with all their <laughs> holiday bowl festivities. <laughs> That's as bad as a nifty quarterback that you've got to face. Third down at 10 is what Hawaii faces after the timeout. No score. Illinois got one first down and then forced to punt. Hawaii has one first down, and now they'll have to earn it on third and ten. Carter. Deep sideline. Intercepted. Bill Mel Johnson's got it. The first turnover of the ball game. And for Phil Mel Johnson, a big interception has got it back in the hands of the Illini offense. Brad, you can see how a legal procedure penalty can come back and burn you. Hawaii is not a great third and ten football team. That time, Illinois just sat in a deep zone. This is Phil Mel Johnson. He'll stay back here and just watch the eyes of the quarterback, and you're going to see him just play set outside. Half field is what they call it, and they see the man coming up. Now watch Phil Mel. He'll come up, break on the ball, and that's as good as you can do it. Making a pick off and an early turnover. Right back in the hands of Verdusco and company for Illinois. 43-yard line. Fagan. Maybe a two-yard pickup. There's Phil Mel Johnson. For the interception. He had three last year for Illinois. Phil Mel's had a nice year, and he's going to be a big, you know, candidate for all Big Ten next, next year in the Big Ten. And uh, you know, he's a lot of schools said he was too small to play, and uh, it showed that the uh, corners are never too small to run. Yeah, that big play that we saw him against Ohio State downing a punt at the one-yard line that led to a safety. Second down and eight, Illinois, with a four-wide receiver group for Verduzco. Drop play, Boyer. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Hawaii may not be big on defense, Gary, but they fly around the football. Well, they, they pursue so well, and their their down linemen are really like linebackers. They run so well to the ball. These are the type of guys you're going to see, you know, a couple of them in the NFL running down on kickoffs that you always see. Tanavasa, Pa'amaui. You're going to see the play right there. That was Tugawai that made the first play. And then when he tried to move it around, Boyer could really not get his speed to the outside. If there's a weakness in this whole Illinois offense, there's not enough speed in the back. Third down, nine. Let's see if they can get pressure on Verduzco. Not enough pressure. Megan with a catch, but a sure tackle made at midfield. And that's going to be about three yards short of a first down. Both teams, again, using down and distance to their advantage, taking a deep drop and making the pass happen in front of them. Jason Verdusco takes a very deep drop, and the reason is he's only five foot eight inches tall, but this offensive line provides him with plenty of protection. See Verdusco hop a couple times, deliver the ball, but in the long yard situation, they're gonna give him that throw. Corey Wells to punt. John Wright, the wide receiver, is a man that calls signals for Illinois. I don't think they fake one on fourth and three here. Well, he's got all of this one. This baby's going all the way to SeaWorld. Yeah, well, they, they have two punters. They need a third now. They need an intermediate punter. Yeah. Like, a, like a two iron, a seven right. iron, and a wedge, you know? <laughs> well, he got a little, much, a little too much two iron on that one. We're scoreless with 8.45 to go in the first. No score. Hawaii set to take over on offense again. Let's talk about the Illinois offense a little bit with Charlene Hawks. 
Brad, we've seen two Illinois drives fizzle so far right off the bat. And earlier I talked with running back uh, Darren Boyer, who gave this reason for why Illinois offense plays 10th in the Big Ten this year. He said that offensive coordinator Tom Beck has been introducing new plays all season long the day before the game. And he says that causes confusion in the huddle. The guys haven't been able to rep the plays enough in order to lock them in mentally before the heat of the battle. And uh, I asked Tom Beck that earlier, and he says, yeah, he likes to introduce the new plays because it's creative, innovative. He likes to throw off the defense with a new look. Apparently, it's throwing off the wrong team. Darren and others on the offense have said that it is a source of frustration for them. Guys? And Darren's a senior, so he can say all of that <laughs> that he wants. <laughs> that, that could be a problem. It also could be a problem. It's a new staff and a new system in the first year also. First down, rainbows from their own 20-yard line. Sims, six yards quickly, and he averages almost seven a carry. That really is the key to making a sprint. Any wishbone or any option offense go is being able to run the fullback. And to do it, he's going to have to run the ball on Dana Howard, number 40, right there. Leading tackler on this football team in 1993. He'll be a Butkus candidate. You see the no-huddle for Hawaii. They are going to do it this football game. Second and four. Sims again. And he's got the first down. The idea here is that there's only four or five different plays that they're running in this option offense. They don't have a lot of ability for a lot of different plays running the fullback but what they can do is come up run a check with me offense read what the Illinois lineup alignment is and then run either right or left off and checkers not chess right here. that's it 31 yard line of first down on balance left and Carter keeps it left side and he got about five tough running inside Chad Kofer in on the hit number 97 Simeon Cole Rice with Tim, on the tackle uh, for Illinois Denny Marson wanted to put in this football game for his front five, front seven players is to give them different Eight looks, give the quarterback a different look each time he runs the option, kind of like disguising pass defenses. That's the goal. Second down and a long four. Hawaii at its own 37-yard line. See, check with me. Everybody's listening. The pitch read beautifully by Ty Washington from the secondary. They love this kid, Ty Washington. Quite a character, they say. And just a redshirt freshman this time. He lines up to the outside, and when you say a, a free safety for Illinois, they line up a little differently. You should see they line up near the line of scrimmage, and their corners really play a lot of half-field coverage, so he was at the line of scrimmage, read it very quickly, and got into the backfield. Penetration against the option will always cause problems. No matter how well you're on the option, you don't like to find yourself third and nine. Carter, a straight drop. Complete over the middle. Intended for Derek Branch. Great job that time by John Holosek. He's second on the team in knocking down pass plays, and he's second on the team in tackles, and that's a good aware football player as linebacker. So Jason Elam, we've seen his kickoff form. Now we'll see him punt. Sixth in the country in putting. After being one of the top place kickers as well. Gary Volker, he's pretty dangerous. 61 was his long this year. That was against the Minnesota Gophers. Not a good punt. And not necessarily a great bounce, but it does roll its way to the 27-yard line. A 41-yard kick for Elam with 6.39 left first quarter. We're still scoreless in San Diego. Mark at the 27-yard line. So everything is okay now, huh? I'm really sorry. Mrs. B ordered spam. He took her ham. Oh, hey, everybody makes a mistake once in a while. But you fix yours up. It came from here, son. You put yourself in your customer's shoes. If you were perfect, you'd have a big head. Now you know you've got a big heart. I think you're ready for these. Perfect. That's what it takes to be your bank. Bank of Hawaii. Hawaii is bank. Toy Jason Verdusco, 5'9", senior, out of California and playing in front of some friends and family. Brad, so far this football game's kind of going along plan. Illinois does not score a lot of points, 10th in the Big Ten in a total offense this year, but their defense keeps it close to the fourth quarter. We'll see if Verdusco can open this game up a little bit. Verdusco, two out of three so far, throwing the ball. 
averages about 168 yards a game passing. And if Jason had his wish, as most quarterbacks would, it would be more like 360. He's done it before. Play action. John Wright's got his second catch. Got him about eight yards. Knocked out over there by Zach Odom. John Wright, quite a story. He's the third in a line of rights to play wide receiver for Illinois. He just does it with good, disciplined pass routes. He doesn't give away his route before he comes out of it. And the two have great confidence in each other and knowing where they'll be. And, you know, the corners for Hawaii are not great man-to-man -man players. That seems to be there most any time they want to do it. Second catch of the night for John Wright. He got nine at second down in the yard. Sneaks his way across the 40 to the 41-yard line where Brian Addison made the hit from the secondary. Well, there you kind of wonder if, uh, you know, second and inches, if you might call the, the play-action pass and try to take them deep. But, uh, you know, Illinois has not had big plays. That's really been their problem. Their longest pass play of the year, Brad, is was 34 yards this year. Their longest run, 47 yards. And their longest touchdown run, just eight, eight yards. yards. Yeah, that's, you don't see that very often. And Lou Tepper's aware of that. He knows he has to get more speed in that backfield. First down, Illinois. There's the play action this time. Produsco in a little bit of trouble. And he got it over the middle to Fagan. Wow. That's a tough throw with a couple of Rainbow Warriors right in your chest. Yeah. He just really is a magician with that football. So fiery. They're pl the players on this football team love the way he competes in a football game. Nice play action pass. You wonder how he sees... Comes down with that one. Now watch this guy's right in his face, kind of sidearms it, gets it there. Picked up four on the pass play. There it is, ground level. You see what he sees, and that ball is thrown to space. Nope. Right in there comes the receiver. Fagan makes the catch. Draw play. Boyer hurdles his way across midfield. He's got a first down. And again, Addison had to make the stop from the secondary. Tanavasa was holding on low. What you have to be when you run the football, when you don't have great speed, is you have to be a great inside runner. Watch this time. Gets the ball deep, picks out his hole, and then doesn't dance around. Just kind of leaps in there for extra yardage. Got to give the offensive line uh, credit on this. But the running backs get what's blocked this time. That's Brad Hopkins, all Big Ten tackle right there. Kind of takes his man the way he wants to go. Just inside the Hawaii 47. First down, Illinois. Fagan now to the 44-yard line. He got planted there by Lewis Randall, the senior linebacker out of Los Angeles. Lewis Randall is undersized, 206 pounds. Walter Santiago, the other inside linebacker, only weighs 210 pounds, Brad. You see Tom Beck. He probably should try to take advantage of that big Illinois offensive line and try to run the ball between the tackles. Four minutes, nine seconds remaining. First quarter, second down and eight. Illinois as they move it into Hawaii territory at the 44-yard line. Produsco. Plenty of time. Sideline complete. The first down to Jasper Strong, who just checked in. Pick up a 12. Well, this was a nice read off the bootleg by Jason Produsco. He tried to hit the back in the flat, but they rolled up their coverage. Wants to get it outside, not there, pulls it down, goes to Strong. Brian Addison just a little bit late with the zone coverage. You know, that's really the type of execution, Brad, that you sometimes can't stop on defense. You have to put pressure on the quarterback. Let's see if they come with the blitz. Three straight first downs for Illinois. This time just inside the Hawaii 30. Back to Boyer on the ground. And another first down as he takes Santiago and the rest of the Hawaii defense with him for 11 yards. Well, that's exactly what they did. They had a corner blitz that time. Tom Beck smelled it out and ran the off-tackle play with just a quick hitter, and that's really the best type of play you could have into a blitz. Boyer gets it and picks up positive yards again. He was voted Illinois' Offensive Player of the Year by his teammates, and he's come to play tonight. There's his numbers on the year, and he's got 24 yards on four carries tonight. You can see his average right there. Not a lot of big plays. 3.8 yards per carriage. carry. So inside the 20 for Illinois. Eighth play of the drive. Right in 
motion. A counter to Boyer. To the 14-yard line. Give him about four more. Junior Tagawai in on the tackle as we go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, Hawaii was concerned that their players would get a little bit too cold in the San Diego weather. They're used to 75-degree weather. It's about 58 degrees here, so they ordered three heaters down here. The problem is, Holiday Bowl's never seen heaters. They don't have a place to plug them in. <laughs> and the fire marshal won't even allow them, even if they were to be able to find a place to plug them in. So they're carting them off, even as we speak. They've been taking off uh, some of the tanks. It might get a little too warm down here, I guess, with these things turned on. Brad? The Illinois players have been in cutoffs all week. <laughs> the kids from Hawaii have been wearing parkas. It's been a strange look in San Diego. Second and six. Produsco to the end zone. Right touchdown! yards, Verdusco to his favorite target. There they are. Fourth touchdown catch of the year for wide receiver John Wright as Bob Wagner looks on, his team about to go down by seven. Chris Richardson. Set for the point after. We told you he had some backers here in California. Seven nothing Illinois. Let's see if we can take a look at drawing this play up here and exactly what Jason Bernusco had to accomplish in execution. This is right, right here. He's going to come in motion, go out. But he's actually the third receiver. Tight end comes here. This tight end comes across, and on the bootleg, he goes to his third man for the touchdown. And that's really the savvy that you have as a quarterback, being able to throw the ball, seeing two guys covered, going to your third guy, have a rush right in your face, and lay the ball over the top. One more look from the end zone this time. You're going to see the pressure he gets. Makes the fake, looks to his first man not there, his second guy not there, and just split-second timing and puts the perfect touch on the ball for a touchdown. We really talked about John Wright, a third-generation fighting right, Illini. For you. Let's go. His granddaddy, Bob, played in 35 for Illinois for Bob Zupke, and then his dad, John Sr., was not only a good wide receiver at Illinois, but a pretty good one with the Detroit Lions. And now here's John Jr. getting it done. Yeah, he said that was for you. He wasn't, he wasn't talking wasn't about talking about me, I don't think. <laughs> also, it was announced yesterday, John Wright has been named... Uh, GTE Academic All-American, and his dad had that same honor, and it's the first time that they can find in the history of college football that a father-son combination have not only been great players, but great in the classroom. So our congratulations to John for his touchdown catch and what he's doing with the books. 7 nothing Illinois. Derek Branch. Out near the 28 before he swarmed under. You know, Brad, one of the things, excuse me, that a quarterback can really earn is respect from his teammates. And sometimes you do it by, you know, little things. And a lot of times it's what you do after the play. When you guys turn on the film and they see you throw a touchdown pass when you're getting hit like that by Lewis Randall, they, they like that in their quarterback. And that's why he was voted MVP. Jason Verdusco. 6 of 7, 59 yards and a score. And I think grudgingly, these two guys have learned to respect each other also. Tom Beckenford was put off by Verdusco's attitude, but slowly he won him over. I think Jason now will understand what he had to go through. And I, I think four or five years from now, he's going to go back to Lou Temper and Tom Beck and say, you know, guys, you were right. You brought out the best of me in the long run. Well, he was pretty good in that drive, 4 for 4, including the touchdown. The man that had the interception earlier from Mel Johnson shaken up. He comes off. First down, Hawaii from the 29. Sims got hit as soon as he touched the ball. Maybe got three yards out of it. Eric Fogey and Chad Kofer make the hit. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week continues tomorrow with a New Year's Eve twin bill for you. And the Pool and Weed Eater Independence Bowl. Wake Forest takes out Oregon at 1230, followed by the Liberty Bowl. Air Force and Ole Miss will have at it 745 Eastern. All this plus reports from New Orleans right here on ESPN. 7-0 here, Illinois in front.
just under two minutes to go, first quarter. Carter got it near the 37, still about two and a half to three yards short of a first down. Dana Howard made the tackle. I asked Lou Temper, who has really has seen a lot of option in his career, and he was a defensive coordinator, what makes this guy so good? And he said he attacks the football, reads instantly, and he really, he talks a lot during the game, but he backs it up. And, you know, he's just an outstanding football player, just as really what you want in an inside linebacker. He had 23 tackles against Michigan State. Third down and four. Carter kept it, and he's dropped after a pickup of about a yard. Yeah, guess who that time? Simeon Rice, the freshman, the true freshman, made the play. You know, he hasn't seen much, much option football. None of it in the Big Ten this year. He's become a pass rush specialist. But watch this guy move. He's going to come on the right side of your screen this time, and he's just flying around. You know, if you can rush the quarterback behind, you can probably play option football pretty well. Elam into punt again on fourth down and three. Gary Volker back deep for Illinois. He'll hit this one a mile in the air. Volker takes it at the 22. And kept his balance to get about five on the return. Oh, Hawaii looked like you were playing Canadian rules that time. Let him catch the ball. <laughs> Gave him a little too much room. He made it good for a five-yard return. And so Illinois... Their defense forces a three and out for Hawaii and the Illinois offense right back on the field. Well, see, that's the problem with the Illinois offense, I mean, excuse me, the Hawaii offense right now. You almost get a feeling when you have a defense that can't slow people hey, down is that you forward. have to hold serve right. almost we like a tennis match. We you can see it right there. He right said, now. we got to get it going, Next guys. Series, we got to go out and find a way to get it going. Because they know the defense can't hold no, up all game if they don't put some points on the board. First down, Illinois. Produsco, the play action again, deep middle, got it to Klein, first down, and a pickup of 16. Klein's become another of Produsco's favorite targets. This is another play action pass. The guy to the left side of your screen is going to run a post to hold the free safety. You see the crossing mark. Klein's on the inside, just a sophomore, a former a walk-on onto this football team, and wearing number 23 is quite an honor for this Illinois football team. We'll talk about that after this play. From the 44-yard line, first down, the line out. Fagan inside, a tough run out near midfield. So we've worked our way through the first quarter. And a Jason Verduzco touchdown pass has got Illinois out in front at the end of one. The Fighting Illini with a 7-0 lead over the Rainbows of Hawaii. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Charlene Hawks as we're set to start the second quarter. There's Jim Klein, who we were talking about. Gary mentioned quite a story wearing number 23. Stephen Mueller, a former Illinois receiver who was a good one, and he's part of, still very much part of this team. It's a great story. Yeah, he, a great wide receiver, hurt his neck, ruled out of football, and stuck around the program, and now has the honor bestowed on Clyde to wear his jersey number. Second down at five on the first play of the second quarter. Verduzco, at plenty of time, missed his tight end, Craig Custer. 86, Craig Custer. Jason Verduzco had hit his last seven passes before that one. Can't hit them all. Well, I wish my coach would have said that. <laughs> you mean offensive coordinators oh, don't yeah, say that, they huh? Don't, they want them all. <laughs> now Beck looking on. See what he's got called for a third down. And a long five. They're 40% conversion on third down this year. Strong and right, the wide receivers. Strong's got it. First down at the 41-yard line. His second catch of the night. Both have been good for first downs. Not enough pressure on the quarterback. What do you do? You're going to have to blitz sometimes. This time, Hawaii comes with the blitz. You're going to see this guy come, and this guy come. Six men rushing. That means it's man-to-man -man on these people out there. Six people rushing inside, man-to-man -man on the outside receiver. Good pitch and catch, puts it in the stomach for a first down. So Illinois moving it down the field again offensively, already with a touchdown lead. 
What you have to do when you're running an inside route on a curl like that is run the man off and come back to the football. Strong did it. Produsco with a little option of his own to Fagan. Fagan paid the price after getting about two yards on the game. And then was buried by Lewis Randall. And Ali, Ali Pule from the outside linebacker spot. In the stop, Ray Joe Shaw. One yard game. Second down, almost nine coming up. There's Brad Hopkins, all Big Ten. Now started out in his career as a 260-pound tight end. And how do you go from tight end to tackle? You gain 50 pounds. Eat a lot. <laughs> the offensive line for Illinois averages 300 pounds a man. That's pretty good size. Don't hit me with my math again. 260 from <laughs> 340. I know. There you go. <laughs> Second and nine, Produsco and a slant to Strong, who's become a big part of the offense so far tonight. He's got his third grab. Demetrius Henderson puts him down. One of the things you have to do when you're throwing the football is be able to pick up the blitz. This time, the tight end on the right side of your picture right here is going to pick up the strong safety blitz. The man in front of him drops, comes inside for the tackle. He picks up the outside blitz. That allows the ball to be delivered to the outside receiver. That is good football when you're throwing the ball. Illinois continue to show great balance. You can't get it any better than that. Third down at five. Fagan, I think, was blocked by the umpire. Didn't see the ball coming. Absolutely. <laughs> That's exactly what happened on that play. That threw off the timing on the play. Produsco has a couple words for the umpire, like uh, something like ref get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, there might have been a, a few words in between there, though. Steve Fagan at the very last instant, you saw him put his hands up. Let's take another look. Fagan's going to loop over the middle, and right where he's trying to go, you see how open it is right there. He has to dodge, and he really doesn't get his head back. And just that one step causes the incompletion. College football's largest kicker, Chris Richardson, in. This attempt from 52, his career long, you see, is 10 yards behind that. He put everything he had into it and came up short to the right. So it's still the Illini in front, but they can't tack on the three. With 12.42 left in the half, they're up a touchdown. Gene and I came to right, so the ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl presented by Chrysler is brought to you in part by the Hawaii Visitors Bureau. The enchanting islands of Hawaii invite you to make your vacation come to life. The Rainbows may be the only team in the country that had to take a weather cut to play in a bowl game. 1242, <laughs> still halftime, Illinois by seven. And Sims. On first down, across the 40, got almost five yards. Jeff Arneson made the tackle. Sims is not the prettiest runner you're going to see in the world, that's for sure. Straight ahead guy, runs about a 4 5 7 40, which isn't bad, you know, but you know, Paul Johnson told us that that position gained 1,700 yards last year. The thing was, three different guys did it last year. Travis Sims has stayed healthy. Travis said he's made three cuts all year, and it always shocks his teammates. <laughs> Straight ahead again, and close to a first down, but looks to be about a half yard shy out to the 45-yard line. Tim McLeod and Dana Howard in on the tackle. One of the unique things about the spread is the big line splits that Hawaii was using. You can see it, and what Denny Marson, defensive coordinator for Hawaii, said is, we have to attack those line splits to be able to control this running game. You're going to see a lot of inside stunning with the defensive tackles to try to force blocks and give different reads to the quarterback. Third down and short, less than a yard to go for Hawaii, and they've got it with Sims, not near the 48. Again, McLeod got him low. Well, I'm sure all my fans realize when I do option football. What fans? My family. Okay. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be the straight man in the, the But you have to run the ball inside for option football. And that's really what Hawaii has done right now in this drive to start off. They have to establish the pullback again. They came out throwing the ball and moving around. If they want to run option ball, they have to establish the pullback. Illinois had it about four more minutes. And they lead by a touchdown. 
touchdown and on the counter action. Nice pitch late. And out of bounds at the 45-yard line goes Brian Gordon. Got about eight yards on that one. This is really, now you set up the fullback, and here's what they're going to do. This time they're going to fake the fullback. Watch this slot back. Fake back, come this way. This man will come in short motion, and you run the option off the counter play right here. Comes one way, back the other way. Last second, Carter pitches it in a very positive play, and it all came off the fact that they started running the fullback. Gordon's a guy that moved to the slot back position from wide receiver. Showed a little bit of both tendencies on that run. Carter didn't get the first down. Got maybe a yard. Holosak in on the tackle. You have to play assignment defense when you're running against the option. And this time, Chad Cofer, number 90, took the dive back. And Holosek scraped outside and took the quarterback. And the outside defensive back had the pitch man perfectly defense that time for the Illinois defense. Bob Wagner knows his team has got its best opportunity to get some points. And they have a third down and one. Rushing yards almost dead even in this one. It's been the passing of Verduzco that's been the difference. Carter's got open field. And he rolls his way down inside the 25. Uh, making a 19-yard pickup. The triple option in short yardage is when it's really powerful in the spread type option football game. You'll see Carter here do two things. Make a great fake, keeps his eyes up. Now watch the head fake right there. Looks to his pitch man, and that creates the space. Carter is only a five flat 40 guy. A lot of people thought Jasper should be the quarterback, but Carter has reestablished himself making the play. He saved himself about a half second with that head fake That's you right. talked about, though. Sims. Got inside the 20, met by Dana Howard, and also Jeff Arneson came up from the secondary. Well, Denny Marson, defensive coordinator for Illinois, will have to start moving his people on defense. He just can't sit there and play catch football against an option football team inside. He needs to start moving Cofer and Foggy and Cole around and confusing the quarterback a little bit. A little bit of stunning up front. Second and five. Some motion at the snap, no flags. And Sims meets Howard, but not before he gets a first down. Well, Brent, you, you're seeing what I saw early in the football game. It seems like Travis Sims is in motion on every play, but he's just such a fast starter off the line of scrimmage. You talk about guns when you've got big arms. Look at the calves on this kid. He says he hasn't worn long pants since 11th grade. Yeah, but you know what the <laughs> idea is, though? You don't wear socks. When you got big calves, you notice those guys never wear socks. You know, it's like when you got big arms, you wear the cutoff <laughs> shirts. He's got big calves, no socks. Well, he used those calves all the way down to the 13-yard line. First down. <laughs> Illinois thinking about a blitz. Carter keeps him down to the seven. What Carter is so good at is feeling his way on the numbers to the outside in. What I mean is he knows when he's outnumbered on the pitch, and if he is, he'll just follow the fullback. This time he feels pressure outside, so he just follows the fullback inside and uses positive yards on a play that really had much outside on an option play. It's relatively easy to look at on a blackboard. Yeah. It's so hard to execute. I ran the wishbone my senior year in college and really almost took up golf. <laughs> Second down and four at the seven-yard line. Great play that time by Hassenstab, I think, and Cole. I, it might have been Kofer, but inside, they pitched the people inside, and that's really what made the play. You just can't sit there and read all day. Denny Marson said that Kofer was going to be one of the keys. They put a lot of pressure on him. To really make reads and plays defensively. Right. He says usually a defensive tackle type player will just play the dive. He's going to have him moving around, playing the quarterback sometimes, playing the dive occasionally, and even sometimes moving outside for the pitch man, turning it over to the inside linebackers, the fullback. Great looking drive, four minutes and 59 yards. 11th play coming up, and it's a big one. Third down at four.
teammates call him Barney Rubble. <laughs> he just rumbled into the end zone, his 10th score of the year. Jason Elam for the point after. Right through the middle. With 8.09 to go in the first half, Hawaii's on the board, and we're even in San Diego. Let's show why this play worked. Few things here. First, big line splits by Hawaii. Look at how far apart the defensive linemen are for Illinois. Now, Kofor's going to try to get inside, and they're going to scrape Holasek. But watch Violetti right here get the big block at the defensive end, and Travis Sim just blows in there. Holasek runs away from the play, playing the option, and they just gash it up the middle for the big touchdown. Violetti, number 67, and McGill, number 53, double-team Kofor, blow back in the end zone, and Travis Sims has confidence in that block and hits it up there full speed. That's the guy that capped the 65-yard drive to tie the score. Jim Klein from the goal line, and he's going to have to down it. Touchback, and Illinois will take over at the 20. Travis Sims with a touchdown. Charlene's got more on him. Brad, Travis is a popular guy with his offensive line, not just because he can take the ball into the end zone, but because he treats them right. At the beginning of the season, he set a modest goal of rushing for 1,000 yards. Well, that was, and he promised them if they helped him, that he would take them out for a steak dinner. Well, that was 500 yards ago. He took them out to dinner, 14 or 15 of them, he said, and he put it on his Visa card. He didn't quite have enough cash. He told me he doesn't know exactly how much it was. He hasn't seen his bill yet. My guess is about 500 bucks. I've seen the offensive lineman. Got to be at least that much. I like these modern football college players. I didn't get a visa in my fifth year in the pro. Maybe it was Travis's dad, huh? <laughs> First and ten. Produsco wants to throw a screen. Got it to Kevin Jackson. And Kevin Jackson makes good for about eight yards. Darrell Green from the secondary made the stop. Really a good call. You could feel the momentum shifting. You knew Hawaii's defense was going to come out, fire it up, try to get to the passer. Illinois had tried a couple of first down passes before they come back now with the screen. Very positive play. Kevin Jackson, a good receiver. That's his 14th catch of the year. And second down and short. to go first half, 7-7. And the give to Boyer, and I don't think he got it. Got a yard, but I don't think he got the two. It's going to bring up third down and short. Stay tuned for more college football action in the New Year's. The Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl week continues. New Year's Day, the Hall of Fame Bowl. Number 16, Boston College, and number 17, Tennessee, at 11 o'clock Eastern. And then 19th ranked North Carolina takes on number 24, Mississippi State, the Peach Bowl from Atlanta. All those great games plus much more bowl coverage right here at ESPN. Third in a yard, Illinois. And they got the yard. Produce goes straight ahead. Out to the 32, maybe the 33-yard line behind Greg Engel as center. Well, Illinois has had success moving the football, but when you look up on the scoreboard, it's 7-7. Seven to seven. That's really momentum shift to Hawaii. That's really a confidence booster for a team that's given up a lot of football points and now seeing your offense move the ball against a strong defense. I'd say shifted momentum goes Hawaii's way right now. Talk about a difference a year can make. Up until this season, Jason Verduzco never scored a rushing touchdown. He scored five times this year, so he has carried the ball enough and enough there for the first time. Screen again. And too high for Jackson. And the pressure at that time forced Produsco to throw the ball too high, even if it would have been a completed. The pursuit while the ball was in the air would have been too much to have that play be successful. Screen pass, a lot of people think it has to be thrown real soft and high. No, you want to put that ball on a dart. Produsco throws a little bit too much air on that one and really doesn't get the play executed properly. So I say Faumui was the guy that got the heat on it. And it brings up second and ten. the wide receivers for Verduzco. He goes to his tight end, though, complete to the 36 to Craig Custer. And Santiago and Green got there to meet Custer to bring up third down at about six. Well, Craig Custer's playing in this football game because a very good football player, Ken Dilger, their 
tight end really of the future and a lot of people think he's going to be a pro football player one of these days broke his hand in practice this week david olson's the starter but they like to use a lot of two tight ends and custer's the guy that's going to see action in the football game tonight craig that apparently was his last stand he's heading to the sidelines <laughs> uh, out of davenport iowa made his first catch ever a year ago in the uh, john hancock bowl that catch only netted about three though it's third down and seven here comes some pressure on Berlusco. John Wright made a great catch. He looks to be maybe a half yard short of the first down. Took a hit from Daryl Green, the strong safety. John Wright showing his hands there. He really did make a nice catch, but it was possible because Darren Boyer, number 26 right here, watch him pick up the blitz. One of the things you have to do at Illinois is pick up blitz. You know, they run a passing attack here for four years under John Makovic, and when you play the backfield for Illinois, you have to be able to pick up those things and recognize them. I thought Illinois might be a half yard shy. I may have uh, spoken too soon. Let's take a look. Nope, they're well, going to get it. Well, that's because we're in the Southwest now. We're used to calling the games. <laughs> Up north is the Midwest. It's, yeah. a, it's a little different tilt over it is. here. Lou Tepper, Rutgers graduate, longtime defensive coordinator in NCAA football at Colorado, defensive coordinator and assistant head coach, and then the same under Makovic at Illinois before taking over. A year ago this week. Yeah, we asked him, has he ever seen anything like the spread before? He said, yes, uh, Bill McCartney used it one spring trying to tinker with his offense, so I, I'm pretty familiar with it. From the 43-yard line, first down, a line out. Tie game just over five minutes in the first half. Jackson gets it across the 45 to the 46. Lewis Randall, number 51, the senior linebacker, in on another tackle. Well, you would think the Illinois line averaging 298 pounds, the biggest line in Illinois history, would be able to push this Hawaii defense around. This time you're going to see it. Basic zone blocking, Pesek and Hopkins and Engel all just kind of block to a zone, and whoever comes into that lane, they take. But uh, Hawaii's doing a nice job of not being able to smash foul football right down their throat. Second down and seven for the 46. Berlusco, the deep drop and the deep ball. Broken up nicely. It was Zach Odom, the sophomore cornerback out of Hawthorne, California, that made the play at the very last instant. This time they crossed two receivers short. They crossed the guy about 15 yards, and then they went a deep post. Verduzco went for the whole touchdown right here, coming right at you. Looks like he's open, but Odom does a nice job of closing on the ball. It was thrown a little bit late, and he, he could have intercepted that play. Zach Odom, the younger brother of a former great linebacker for Hawaii, Mark Odom. And he did show that closing speed. That's one thing Illinois doesn't have is a game-breaking wide receiver, a deep guy, and although Wright got out there and got open. I would say overall, they, they do have a lack of speed in their specialist players. Ninth play of the Illinois drive, third and seven. The quick screen to the wide receiver to right. He's got a first down. Well, I tell you, this football team has averaged for the year 40% third down conversions. They just did it again at that play, and it was really run very well. And a good call that time again. The screen to the wide receiver. Well, you talked about what Illinois has been able to do offensively on third down. That has really been a sore spot for the Hawaii defense. They've allowed their opponents 47% on third down. So almost half the time they give up a key third down, and they did there. Chris Mila, the defensive coordinator of the Rainbows, we talked to him about that. He just kind of rolled his eyes as if to say, yeah, we, we don't want it at 47%. Play fake. Time for Verduzco. He delivers the fourth catch of the night for Jasper Strong. Another 12-yard pickup and another Illinois first down. Well, Jasper Strong began the season as a starter and lost his job. He has plenty of ability, but he was dropping a lot of passes. And He's now worked his way back and seen some action. You see, Verduzco, this is really, again, he wanted to throw the ball to the right, came back to his second or third receiver to the left, and threw a perfect pass to the sideline. J.J. Strong, uh, what a big Chicago. pass versus Purdue to he really did. win a football game. That was his previous best game, three catches, 46 yards, and a touchdown against yeah. Purdue, but he's got four for 43 already tonight. And around, Klein with Verduzco blocking. He got the corner, and he's still on his feet. He got a first down. You gotta love those 5'9 quarterbacks who pick somebody off and Klein comes around for a dozen. Well, I, want to, I want to say he blocked them low, but I don't know if he can block them high. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. A quick snap this time. You're gonna see it 
They did not take a long count. Comes up, snaps the ball. Now watch it. Verduzco pitches, kind of peels back. He gets one block, and then watch Pesic come over and get a, even a lower block. I, I think Verduzco's was better than Pesic, really. Pesic got his on Maha Tanavasa, the nose man, and it's first down, Illinois. Tie game, three and a half to play, first half. Verduzco fires to right. First and goal, Illinois. 16 yards that time. Well, he has a beautiful ability, Jason does, to fake and get his head around and read it instantly. If he would have waited just another second to throw this ball, Daryl Green would have made the play. You're going to see it coming out. Daryl Green is right there on about the 15-yard line. He comes up just one step. The ball's on the way. He dives, but the ball is put right on the mark. Perfect execution by the quarterback and the wide receiver. So now Illinois down close to the Rainbow's goal line. First and goal with the five. Full house backfield for the Illini. Verduzco had three guys he wanted to hand it to, and everybody went a different direction. But he made do, improvised, and got a couple yards. Yeah, this is the old spinner series that they used to run off the ring tee. They just don't have it in this offense. That's the problem. <laughs> well, I like that. You go two tight ends, bring in three big backs, and let your quarterback run it up the middle. Nice. Obviously a busted play here. Everybody's kind of, I think it was actually Jason who went the wrong way on that play. Could be. And he has to come up and pay the price. You got to figure three backs. Yeah. One of them, uh, three of them knew where they were going. Maybe Jason didn't, but he did get almost they three yards. Three yards. Second and goal at the two. And when Jeff Kenny was in here, he used to run the option out of this play. I don't think we'll see it from Jason. Close, but not quite. For Darren Boyer. Still about a yard to go. Yeah, and on that handoff, the option play was wide open to the outside. Eight and one yard really was a well-executed drive. Remember, they started out with a screen pass. This is following up a big touchdown by Hawaii. Wagner Lester has checked in to the Illinois backfield. They've won 79 yards. They need one more, though. 15th play of the march. Third and goal. And Verdusco goes down. They did run the option. Lewis Randall was there along with Junior Tagawai. Tagawai came from the backside that time, beat his man. He really shouldn't have been in on the play. Just a tremendous individual effort. You know, he came from the left side, the blind side. Somebody just did a little bit of an Olay block, and he just catches him from behind. He tries to pick off and cause a fumble, but big play by Tagawai. We have a timeout. Illinois with 1.14 left first half, and we're tied at 7. Pick up the phone for the latest sports news from ESPN anytime, day or night. 95 cents per minute. Call one nine hundred Chris Richardson's going to soften himself a spot at about the nine-yard line. A 19-yard field goal attempt coming up. As Illinois looks to break our 7-7 tie. John Wright to hold. Richardson doesn't miss inside 35 yards all year. And he connects again. So a long Illinois drive. They wanted a touchdown. Obviously, they have to settle for three. And it's 10-7 Illini. Coming up in about a minute and 12 seconds. Duracell halftime report. We've got Sports Center first, Ray Hanley out in New York. We'll have an update on hoops. And then we'll preview the Independence and Liberty Bowls and a report from the Sugar Bowl as well. That's our Duracell halftime report coming up in about 72 seconds. Here in San Diego at the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl, the 15th annual occasion. Lou Tepper's fighting Illini now lead 10-7 after that Chris Richardson field goal. Hawaii came up with a big play when they needed it, though, Gary, to keep them out of the end zone. They really did. The third down option play, and as I said before, I think Jeff Kinney, the backup quarterback, would be a little better running that option. Jason Verduzco just does not have the speed for option football. Bob Wagner 
seen his team go from four seven and one to ten and two. But again, they said that they're going to have to beat a team on the mainland in a bowl game like Illinois to get some respect. Yeah, and, and Lou Temper said he, he felt the emotional edge was to Hawaii. You know, if, if Illinois was 10 and 2, they'd definitely be up in the top 15 10. High short kick. It'll be taken by one of the up men. And then out to the 35 yard line. That's where Hawaii will go to work on offense. They've got quite a bit of time to work. They have plenty of time, but they really don't have the passing attack that can take advantage of a minute six. They, they really build their game around running the fullback and then running the option off of it. Could you use one of your trick plays here, or would uh, Illinois be? I think it'd be, well, I think it'd be wasting it right now. I think you want to set it up off a running game right now. Illinois should be back better. The last Hawaii drive was mostly Travis Sims. Remember that we saw Jason Elam kicking field goals from the 50-yard line, which is a 60-yarder, so they really only have to get to the 43-yard line. They don't have that far to go. Straight drop for Carter. Waits until the last instant, trying to go to Derek Branch, and he got planted as soon as he let go of it by Kofer and Rice. I'm a little surprised with the play calling. You know, it, it, they got the ball at the 35. They really only have, they have to gain about, oh, it's... 15 and they got about 25 yards and they would be in Elam's range so they really don't have to panic Paul Johnson as good as you want to see it understanding the spread offense and adjusting I think they're going to probably run some type of inside player option now Hawaii's run it 19 times they've thrown it five times they'll try to throw it again on second and ten I just don't like the strategy right here when you have a field goal kicker that they have and you know that time they just can't handle pass protection when people know they have to throw. Simeon Rice that time was right in his face. Might have gotten a piece of the pass, too. Knocked it well away from the intended receiver. There's Elam on the sideline, just itching for a chance. But as Gary said, they got to get about 25 yards to even give that leg a chance. Carter's one for five throwing the football. Third down at 10, Hawaii with 57 seconds left in the half. He waits and finally delivered, and he got a first down. Brian Gordon made the catch, got about 14, first down Hawaii. Now when you're only one for five, you pick your spots to finally light one up, and he did there. Well, when you're throwing 43%, people aren't expecting much more than that. <laughs> now they only need about 10 or 15 yards to give their field goal kicker a chance, and they might have it right here. Nope, one hopper. Well, Hol he threw it right through John Holosek's hands that time. John put his head be between his hands and wanted to know, how come I didn't catch that? Cy Hirota was the intended receiver. The ball was thrown low. I know he won, uh, Michael Carter wanted to throw it over Holosek. There you see him, middle of your screen, number 52, plays the zone so smartly. Now watch this. Right through his hands. Kind of threw him a fastball. I thought it was going to be a curve. Looking for that breaking ball. <laughs> And it's second and ten. Forty seconds left, and now the guy we've been talking about is starting to get that right leg loosened. They have two timeouts. They can run the football. Instead, they go to the air, and they're going to be close to another first down. In fact, they'll have it at the 40-yard line. Well, nice job by Michael Carter. I'm up here saying they can't throw the ball very well, and he just moves it down for two big first downs. And really, they are in field goal range right now with 33 seconds to go. And they have two timeouts. There's no big hurry. Danny Marson hoping his Illini can hold here. It's another Hawaii first down, though, at the point. Now that one shouldn't have been thrown. And Phil Mel Johnson's got his second interception of the night. One too many passes, I think, for the Rainbow. Well, I think they just got a little too greedy in this drive. I mean, they were basically in field goal range they have a kicker that can kick a 60-yard field goal we were watching him this time Phil Mel Johnson again in the middle of the football field this is him number three they're gonna play underneath coverage and he Phil Mel Johnson just read the quarterback and this ball is just thrown too high sails on him and Johnson gets an easy pickoff and really I'm surprised with two timeouts they didn't run some type of a draw or inside play and tie this game up at halftime Phil Mel with two picks tonight Happy birthday, Ma, Detroit. What's up? Happy birthday, Ma. What's up, Pops? <laughs> Mom and Pops, you've got one for each of you. 19 seconds left. Illinois is going to put it up anyway. Brian's got it. 
to the 43 yard line. 25 yard pass blood. Well, you got to respect the way Jason Produsco can get the ball out of his hands and put it into a zone before the play really even happens. But he is a tough thrower in any situation. 12 seconds left. We'll be back after this timeout. Chris Richardson on the sideline waiting for another chance. They're going to have to probably get about 15 more yards in the next play or so to I, give him a chance. Yeah, he's a little different than Elam. They're going to have to get the ball to about the 25, 26 yard. And Verduzco will work from the gun for the first time tonight. And then the deep drop and then the sack. Well, he threw it. Incomplete. Yeah, they're calling intentional grounding on that play, and I think that's a good call. There was no one near it, and that's going to end it, move him out of field goal range. He tried to save the play by Jason throwing it away. On the offense, lost it down. Andrew Tolina was the guy that got the pressure on Verduzco, and he tried to underhand one. Yeah, uh, Bertie Kozar taught him that pass. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, Bird. Comes back this time, deep drop. He feels the sack. You know, he tries to get rid of it. You got to admire that type of guy. He's just playing to win it all the time. Comes out of, he knows he can't get a sack here, so he tries to get rid of it. Maybe they won't call it. Save one more play. And one play left till halftime. Now, if they have anybody left that can throw the ball, that's usually these linemen can throw it 65, 70 yards in the air. I always say, you know, Coach, I can only throw it about 35 yards. Why don't you put in one of the deep guys for this Hail Mary pass? And Hawaii saw a chance to tie, go by the boards with a Phil Mel Johnson interception, his second of the night. So the Fighting Illini of the Big Ten lead the WAC champion Rainbows of Hawaii in intermission. 10-7, our halftime score as we take it to Sports Center that's coming up next. on beautiful Oahu, the University of Hawaii at Manoa provides an excellent yet affordable college education. One of the world's most international universities, Manoa offers a comprehensive array of courses. UH scientists are national leaders in ocean sciences, volcanology, astronomy, and other research disciplines. The university is committed to serving people by using its expertise to tackle the world's problems. Excellent resources, dynamic faculty, and high caliber students, the University of Hawaii at Manoa. From the crash of the Hindenburg to the eruption of Mount St. Helens, students at the University of Illinois have access to the largest public university library in the country. This library is not just a book warehouse, it's a teaching facility. To make it today, you have to be able to find information, and this library has taught me how to do that. I've learned how to locate and use information. The people here have helped me become a better student. The library at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Halftime of the 15th Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl in San Diego at intermission. The Illini of Illinois out in front of the Rainbows of Hawaii. Our halftime score 10-7. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson back with you here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Gary, that last drive for Hawaii, uh, you and I both said, why not take it down the field? You got maybe the best kicker in all of college football and tie it up at 10 apiece yet. Maybe the Rainbows feel pretty good only being down three. Well, I think you're right, Brad. They go into the locker room. The last time they played two Big Ten teams, it's been 85 to 23. So they go in looking at a 10 to 7 score, feeling good. I can just hear everybody in the locker room. The coaches are saying, we can handle it. Everybody's yelling, we can beat these guys. And the four defensive backs got their hands up in the air saying, wait a second. What about Jason Verduzco? Because he really kept the line eye in this game in the first half. He started it out with a touchdown pass early off of a bootleg play. And that's really got the game going for the Lion Eye. It was a bootleg play to the right where he hit John Wright coming in motion. And what he really did is go to his third wide receiver on this play. He's going to look to his right, covered. His second tight end is covered. Then he recocks, takes a big hit, and throws a perfect pass down the middle to take a 7-0 lead for Illinois. Now, Hawaii comes back running inside and running option plays. And this is the execution. 
fullback gets tackled. The quarterback comes out, fakes Simeon Rice with a head fake to the outside. It's Kevin Hardy, excuse me. And Michael Carter moves up. He's 5 flat 40, but he runs everything so strategically that he opened up the game with the option play. And, of course, they got into position to run the fullback up the middle. Good blocking on this play by Violetti. And Travis Sims hits it running full speed, gashing in there. And that's really the touchdown for Hawaii. It brings this game to 10 to 7. Verduce goes 16 of 21, 170 yards in the touchdown. He's been about the only difference in a Chris Richardson field goal is the only difference at intermission. The Illini out in front by three. Our rock and roll halftime performance coming to a close at Jack Murphy Stadium. And the fireworks erupting over the 15th annual Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl. Another close one. We talked at the beginning of the game about how many of these games have been determined in the final minutes. How many have been decided by a touchdown or less or maybe by a point. And the five of those have been decided by a point. We're in a three-point game right now as we take a look at our halftime statistics. As you can see, the passing difference is Jason Verdusco. That 170 yards on a 16 for 21 first half. And we really see it. And it has been the key yards on first down. The Illini offense has opened up to running a lot of play action pass on first down. And when you hit 16 out of 21, that's how you come up with the yards for first down of seven and a half yards. Of course, now the strength of uh, Hawaii has been that man. When they started running the ball inside with Travis Sims, he and Carter started picking up yards. They both at the half have 43 yards rushing. We had the feeling Bob Wagner would be happy down by three. Let's find out. Let's go to Charlene Hawks. Coach, two interceptions in the first half. What adjustments did you make in the locker room? Well, we have to play better. I mean, it's, uh, you know, give Illinois credit, but we just feel like we haven't executed very well either side of the ball. We do a lot of little things better. We'll be a lot better off this half. We're going to get an extra possession also since we get the kickoff. Despite a 10-2 record, the Rainbows have struggled to gain national respect. Is this your moment? Is this uh, the time to turn things around? Well, you know, we, we would you know, hope it would be. I, I think regardless of what happened, this Illinois team beat a, a Michigan and Ohio State team ranked ahead of us. So, uh, you know, they're playing okay. I, you know, we, you know, the people haven't seen our best football. Hopefully they'll see it in the second half. With your defense coming up with that strong goal line stand there at the end of the first half, keeping Illinois to three rather than seven, what does that do to your team going the second well, half? Well, it, it keeps the game closer. I mean, unfortunately, they've been able to possess the ball. we got to get them off the field. Their offense has been their best defense so far. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank coach. you. Brad? 10-7, the halftime score. Lou Tepper's team up by a field goal, and the second half just moments away from San Diego. Just about set to kick off the second half. Jason Elam warming up his putting leg on the sideline. He hopes he doesn't have to use it a lot in the second half. This guy didn't have an interception the entire regular season. He picked a pretty good time to have two in the first half from well, Al Johnson. Yeah, he made a great play on one of them, and then just was the, in the right place at the right time on a poor throw at the end of the half. Uh, you know, I got the feeling that Bob Wagner there was kind of underselling the importance of this football game. He told us that he wanted to win this football game bad. He wanted to get in there and move his team up in the rankings. And he knows if he plays well against Illinois, he can move up a couple spots and enhance his program. Obviously, due to the geography of where the University of Hawaii is located, a lot of their games are late at night. A lot of people don't get a chance to see them play. They played pretty well tonight. They saw Illinois score first, though. John Wright's 14-yard catch put the Illini up by a touchdown with 232 of the first quarter. Then Travis Sims countered a long Hawaii drive. He went in from six yards out to make it even at seven. Chris Richardson has the only other scoring. A 19-yard chip shot field goal with 112 left in the half. That's where we stand. As Bob Wagner and Lou Tepper's teams have two quarters left to try to prevail in the 15th annual Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl. Hawaii only put up 128 yards total offense in the first half. And, you know, Illinois has only outscored, out, I'm sorry, outgained in total yards two teams this year. So they are really happy looking at the scoreboard gaining 226 yards, but not enough points. Hawaii, the eighth highest scoring team in the country. They were number two in the Western Athletic Conference, but only a touchdown in the first half. Bob Wagner said we haven't played our best football. Hopefully we will in the second half. We're about set to find out. Richardson to kick. He got all of this one. Derek Branch just watches it go over his shoulder. And so Hawaii will work from the 20-yard line. 
out comes Michael Carter, who really had a pretty efficient first half, with the exception of those two errant throws. One in an excellent play, as Gary said, by Bill Mel Johnson. The other one just a pass that shouldn't have been thrown. And Hawaii so far has yet to get that great ground game going. But we saw the number one rushing team in the country earlier this year, Nebraska, a much different style of rushing team than this group. And quickly, without a huddle, Illinois does get lined up. First down, Hawaii. That's the way to start the second half. Everyone did their job that time. Fake to the fullback was good. Chad Kofer, number 90, is going to make the tackle on the fullback. Carter brings it out. Hardy makes the tackle on the quarterback. Kilo busts into the seam. The wide receiver makes a block, and that's a positive play. Great execution coming out of halftime. Longest play of the night for the Rainbows. 20 yards for Kilo Out to the 40-yard line. the left side and it's Travis Sims who got about four. Holasek is there to meet him number 52. John the sophomore 6'2", 237. Boy when you think about how good this Illini defense could be next year it's scary. It really is you know Rice just a freshman Kevin Hardy a redshirt freshman Howard and Holasek just sophomores. You know, and the talk John Holosek said his greatest achievement is coming back from cruciate surgery, and he's playing one year later. Second and five, Sims again. He's going to be close to a first down. Looks to be a little bit short. I think they're going to use the same strategy opening this drive as they used before on their touchdown drive, and that is try to establish the fullback inside. That keeps the triangle for Illinois. That man right there, Holosek. And, uh, and Sims making plays inside, and Holosek will have to make plays, and Howard will have to stay inside, and the options open wide. Third down, less than one. Sims got the first down, keeps his footing, and he party rubbles his way again down near the 41-yard line. He does go north-south, doesn't he? There it is. You see him from the legs. The only guy you can recognize from his shoe level right there. <laughs> Travis Sims. Looking at the line block, and they're going to try to create angles. You see Dana Howard. He runs out of the play right there. Gets crushed from the outside. Travis Fonseca, number 73, makes the play. So some... First downs have Hawaii right into Illinois territory here early in the third quarter. Hawaii down a field goal. And we got a timeout. Yeah, they didn't have a play called at the line of scrimmage, and there was only four seconds to go, so he had to come over. Less than two minutes into the third quarter. Hawaii looking good on this offensive march. We'll see if they can keep it going when we come back. My brother, about to become a father. So how big can a crib be? Season tickets went on sale today, Mike. Yeah. Well. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl, presented by Chrysler, is brought to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that fresh, pure, natural taste, nothing beats a Bud. Part of the festivities this week, Miramar Naval Air Station on Tuesday, where both teams went, and they had a Top Gun luncheon out there and met the Top Gun pilots. I don't think Tom Cruise was there, but the rest of these guys were. I don't know if the reason for that haircut is getting too close to that jet or not, but... <laughs> you, you could tell them you don't like it, okay? No, that's all right. Well, I could from up here, I guess. <laughs> so Hawaii with a first down. Just inside the Illinois 42 yard line. 10 to 7, Illinois in front. Carter in trouble. Can't make the late pitch. Holasek made another play. He will get around the football. Todd Leach was there to help him. Again, the line splits, big line splits again for the. Hawaii football team. Here's Holosek right there. He's going to come out, scrape, and make the play to the outside. Fake the ball to Sims inside. This is a prearranged stunt, and he stunts into the option that time. That's what I think they're going to have to do is attack those line splits and move their defensive ends and linebackers. Second down and nine. Ivan Jasper is also the ball game for Hawaii. And remember, he can throw. 
Carter changing things up at the line. Carter again does it, picks the ball, is loose. And Jasper, the last man to touch it. Todd Leach really put a lick on Carter, who caught the ball up. That's exactly what happened. They were bringing Leach from the backside on a stunt. He was coming hard. And when Kevin Hardy, number 51, slowed the quarterback down, it was enough for 55 to catch the play from the backside. There you see the outside. Actually, it's Colfer to the outside that slows it down, and Hardy, uh, Leach catches it from behind. Leach doesn't get a lot of ink. No, it's kind of tough when you've got a freshman playing behind you that makes all Big Ten freshman of the year. There's Cooper, the biggest Illinois player at 6'7", digging in on third down and long, third and 11. Carter fires, got it, complete inside the 30. And a first down Hawaii, so they don't throw that often, but 14 more yards, this time Sai Hirota in on the catch. And a first down for the Rainbows. This was just a two-man pattern this time, and I'm not sure why Dana Howard right there didn't get out underneath the curl because they're going to run a curl here, and this man's going to come up. And the receiver, when there's no one short on the play, should come out to the wide, widest man on that curl. Virginia Dana Howard just didn't get wide line. enough. Good throw by Carter. and pitch and again Leach Long makes a nice play yeah. along with Holosek. Uh, you can see now that the adjustment that Illinois has made is to start moving their linebackers. They're crashing from the outside. They're scraping inside. The inside linebackers Leach and you'll see Simeon Rice do the absolute same thing and they're giving Carter different reads. You're going to see Kofer take it on inside. Oh here it is. Holosek's there and from the backside Leach makes the play on the cleanup. Line of scrimmage the 28 yard line of Illinois. Second down and nine, Rainbow. Unbalanced left. That's the way they go with it. And Carter on a late pitch to Gordon. To the 22-yard line. Dana Howard made the tackle. Dana Howard with the tackle. This guy is going to be something else. He really, Howard. he really is, but he's not used to playing option football. Just hasn't seen it that much, and it's a whole different type of defensive attitude. You have to play assignment football. This time they fake it inside. You see the crashing end come in. Waits till the last second, pitches it out, and good blocking out in front by the wide receivers the and the running backs to gain a big positive play. There's Dana, the sophomore out of East St. Louis, Illinois, led this club in tackles. He was second in the Big Ten with his 138 stops coming in, and he's been in on six tonight. And the last one dropped Ryan Borden, who still has not gotten up. No, I don't think that's Gordon. I beg your pardon. It's Hirota, the wide receiver. Yeah, he's pointing to his ankle right there, right side. I wonder if someone didn't fall on him. A lot of times when you're blocking downfield, you don't see what's happening behind you, and the play rolls up your leg from behind. Hirota, who had just made a catch in this series down and they're checking that right ankle with 10 59 to go third quarter I want to be sure to remind you to join chris berman tom jackson chris mortensen and joe theisman for espn's emmy award-winning nfl pregame show nfl game day saturday 11 30 eastern and then sunday at noon eastern as they'll have all the previews and features of the nfl playoffs then the guys come back for the most complete NFL wrap-up and highlight show on television. NFL primetime, that's Saturday at 7.30 Eastern, Sunday at 7, right here on ESPN. Who are you taking in the NFL playoffs, Gary? Well, it's hard to bet against San Francisco yep. watching them go to play, but I, I really think that Dallas is going to put it on. They've got a great defense, and uh, they're the only team I think can, can beat the 49ers. Third down, three, tenth play of the Hawaii Drive. Their biggest third down conversion situation of the night, and Carter's got it for him to the 16-yard line. Todd Leach made another tackle, but not before shifty Michael Carter got about five. Well, Dana Howard is always going to be a guy that draws a lot of blocking from the outside, from linemen. This time, he's going to get it. Read the option, play a snap. Where is he going to get hit from? You never know if it's coming inside, outside. They get the center on him this time. Doug Violetti, the guard, gets in on it, cleans him up, and knocks him down. You knocked Howard down. You're running a very effective football game. The Rainbow's perfect on this drive on their third down conversions. Three for three. And now a first down at the 17. Travis Sims to the four. Fred, he just started. 
it so well. He has such great confidence and trust that there's going to be a hole there. And you don't know how tough that is because you don't know if you're getting the ball or not. A lot of times you're getting hit right in the mouth when you don't have the football, and you have to take it up inside. Slash is this time behind the nose. Great block that time by center Lenny Amosa. He breaks behind the nose that time. Mike Cole reads it strong side. Very positive play. First and goal for the Rainbows just outside the Illinois four. Sims to the one. This has got the Hawaii touchdown tonight. He's close to another one. And this is so impressive to move it. This is an outstanding defensive football team out of the Big Ten this year. This defense really won the, won the conference for him, got him into this uh, position to be in this Holiday Bowl, and they're being pushed out on the field right now the last two drives. Sims behind Carter. Second and goal. Is it a touchdown? and one pass on that drive and Sims for the second time tonight. Well, I tell you, this is one tough football player. He got stuck right as he got that football spun off it for the touchdown. Jason Elam for the point after. seconds remaining third quarter for the first time tonight the rainbows of hawaii thanks to that top fullback travis sims are out in front by four how 9 29 to go third quarter travis sims 34 yards on six carries on that 80 yard touchdown march for hawaii as they go 80 yards in 13 plays and five minutes 31 seconds elapsed not a bad looking opening third quarter drive that's why i really thought bob wagner was selling a little bit with charlene because i know they went into halftime and said these guys are tough this is big 10 we're playing with them i know they're big but we're knocking them off the ball we can win this football game the whack champions in front for the first time tonight he loved the kick fagan back deep and it'll be fagan at the eight yard line an opening out to the 30. Matthew Harding in on the tackle on the special teams. Well, one more look at the touchdown here. You're going to see that he stopped. Dana Howard has him. John Holasek has him. And Eric Fogarty has him. He stopped him cold. Holasek has him around the ankles. He spins in and makes the touchdown. Dana Howard one more time. Stiffs up inside. Has him stop. You see him spin off and those legs just push him into the end zone. Now Illinois will work from the 31-yard line. And let's see if they go to the air right away. First time they've trailed tonight. Custer, the tight end in motion. Sprint draw to Boyer. He got about four before he got knocked out of bounds. Let's go to Charlene Hawks. Brad, this past summer, the WAC media picked Hawaii to finish eighth. Well, when the Rainbows got wind of that, they simply got mad. All-American Jason Elam told me that all the seniors got together to find out how could they prove their critics wrong, what could they wear, and they came up with a T-shirt that says, ranked eighth, not, and they wear it <laughs> under their jersey sometimes. They wear it all over the place. And now look at them, 10 and 2, here at the Holiday Bowl with every touchdown. They tell their critics something that we like to say on ESPN, in your face. <laughs> They're doing Brad, it. They're doing it tonight. They lead 14 to 10. A WAC champion hasn't won the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl since 1984. Second and four. They look like Verduzco wanted to play fake to somebody, and now he scrambles for his life. Threw short and got it back to the line of scrimmage to Dave Olson, the tight end. Stop. Didn't it look like Jason wheeled around to look to somebody? It was play action pass, and I think Darren Boyer went the wrong way this time. He wants to come up the side because you see Boyer has to come back side to make the block, and now you see a little pirouette move. Kind of goes to the sideline run, and now he's just looking to throw the ball and not get intentional grounding, and he picks up the one-yard pass. You know, when you're 16 for 21, you don't like to throw it away either. That's you right. Wanna, you you want to get, get that short one to your tight end. <laughs> That's right, the stats. 
seventh different receiver he's used tonight. And here's some of the all-time marks. How about those numbers? Well, I tell you, he has been nothing but magnificent in his career at Illinois, and he's a great leader, and he brings teams from behind and wins football games. I think he's going to have an opportunity to play up in Canada at least, and I'm not really downgrading the way he wants to play. He's a high school wrestler, a very tough individual, and you know what I respect him more than anything is that Michigan game when it was a tie game and they got the ball back with 12 yards, they almost had a fight pushing him out on the field and making him down it with the one knee because he wanted to take one more chance of winning that football game. There's a great sign. Huh? He has been a nightmare to opponents over his four years. We've got an injury on the field. Taase Pamui is the man down. Bob Mui is one of their key players on defense, too. That front line of the junior goes about 265 pounds. They need his quickness, and more importantly, they need his size. And he's gotten some good pressure on Verdusco over the course of the night. You can get a head start on your New Year's Day of college football with College Game Day Special January 1st Edition live from New Orleans. They'll preview and analyze all the New Year's Day bowl games, plus look at the Miami football dynasty and the problems with the Washington football program. College Game Day Special New Year's Day Edition begins at 10 Eastern right here on ESPN. Miami got another little scuffle with uh, Alabama down on the streets of New Orleans, huh? Yeah, the big one's coming, though, in another couple days. Yeah, so. they'll have plenty of time to scuffle, then. <laughs> Give them three and a half hours. Third down and two. Two tight ends set for Illinois. Comes the blitz. And it works. It definitely works. And it was Lewis Randall, number 51, who's had a big night. Yeah. And you could see Jason Verdusco this time just storm off the field because I know he knew that there was a blitz coming and he had to hand off the fullback right here. Number 22, Brian Anderson, is going to come up. And now Corey Wells will punt. Derek Branch back deep for Hawaii. And they've got the return on. A good bounce, a real good bounce. All the way down to the 10 yard line. Derek Branch could do little about it. It was such a knuckleball, Branch didn't know how to try to get to it, and it ends up being a 51 yard kick. 7.33 to go, third quarter. Hawaii in front by four. A couple of gentlemen, head coaches, if you will, Jim Filling from Thrifty Car Rental, and uh, Another head coach with the Chrysler Corporation. Ted Cunningham, executive vice president of marketing for the Chrysler Corporation. These guys will be presenting not only to the winner the big trophy for the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl championship, but also the MVPs, the two MVPs offensively and defensively. They'll do that at the end of the ballgame. Lou Teppers, Illini down by four. This is the worst starting field position of the night for Hawaii. Carter drops back and throws, and his receiver never turned around. Ivan Jasper was heading downfield, didn't have his head on much of a swivel, almost hit him in the back. Yeah, you wonder if that was an audible at the line of scrimmage, and maybe Jasper didn't hear the call because uh, he never turned around, and it's hard to complete him when your receiver doesn't even see him. Uh-huh. So it's second and ten from the ten. I think there has to be a lot of concern now for the lion eye side of the field they have not been able to handle the inside running game and the option plays off of it right now they really need to get a couple stops second and ten sim spins out for maybe three sitting and rice the first to meet him you know the other interesting thing about this game so far is that both of these defenses have caused a lot of fumbles through the they're top in the national in the NCAA in causing fumbles. They each caused 20, and so far we've been relatively and we've been error-free fumbling the ball. That's Danny Marson, the defensive coordinator of Illinois, and he said playing against Bob Wagner's spread offense, the key is discipline. And he said we've been pretty good about that over the years. It's third down and seven. 
Carter is 4 of 11, and he's thrown two interceptions. Now be careful with it here. He keeps it and pitches late. And a first down. Gordon got it off to the 30-yard line. Boy, just when you thought Carter was going to keep a handle on that thing at the last instant, he got it out to number 15, and Gordon got 17 yards. This is a base play. They could have handed it to anybody. The fullback, watch Michael Carter. He's so adept. The execution is so perfect. Gordon comes in quick motion, fakes it inside. You see the people come for the fake, runs it. Now watch him force it right to the man. Stop it right there. Carter really makes a block by forcing the tackle, pitching outside to Gordon. In perfect execution of the option that time, the triple option, and they fumble it out of bounds, just as we talked about, no turnover so far. Gordon, four carries for 26 yards on the night. Now it's Sims, and he runs smack dab into Eric Bogey, the big senior out of Chicago, 6'3", about 306, and he came in heavy at the beginning of camp and didn't have a starting job because he came in at about 306. And Denny Marson says, and then we got to work on him, and now he's down to about 306. Right. <laughs> he tried to tell us, though, that he's in much better shape now because he's a running 306. I don't know if we bought that one, but the weather was nice and everything, That's so right. we were happy to sit there and listen to it. <laughs> Second down, a long eight. Hawaii with a four-point lead with six minutes left, third quarter. Complete intended for Ivan Jasper, and I think if Michael had that to do over, he would have taken off with it. He had a lot of room in front. Yeah, either that or thrown it lower. That's right. Either way. <laughs> yeah, but either one of those two. You know, Michael Carter does such a great job. And the tough thing that people don't realize about running option football as a quarterback is you get hit so often that it's not as easy to throw those plays. You're getting hit on your arms, and you got bruises towards the end of it. You see him come outside this time. He breaks the pocket. He does have room to run, but he's got a man wide open there. It just throws it a little high and wide. The Rainbows, 8 out of 12 on their third down conversions tonight. They've got another one here. Third down, 9. Completes it. And a first down. Well, wait a minute. Now, the umpire... It may be a disagreement. Gordon says he's got it. The Illinois coaches say he trapped it. And it is a first down, our referee says. Tell you what, Carter's come up with five big completions tonight. He, he That's really the five has. he's completed. And another third down conversion. Dana Howard is a little bit confused on this play. Let's watch him. Dana Howard is right here. Watch before the snap. He isn't quite sure. He's trying to move people around. You see Artisan trying to move him. The ball is snapped. And that confusion just slowed Howard enough to just not get there on the play for the first down. So the completion good out to the 40-yard line. First down to Rainbows. And now on the spread option, Carter keeps it for five. Simeon Rice in on the tackle. They really do have this Illinois defense on their heels right now. You know, one of the things that the defensive coordinator, Denny Marson, said he was concerned about is getting to the speed and tempo of a bowl game. You know, you practice and you haven't played for so long after a month and a half, and then you tell the guys that they have to play assignment football. It's really different than playing attack football, and it appears right now that Illini are playing from their heels and reading a little bit too much. Remember, Hawaii started at their own 10-yard line with terrible field position. Now it's out to the 45 or at second and five. can stop him. 14-yard ramble for Carter. Well, Carter's just a five-flat 40, I guess. That's what they say. But he runs full speed on every play, and he knows the angles of the option so well. He comes out the line, makes the good fake again, that gets the top speed right away. You see him press the play. He sees the opening, and even though he knows he's going inside, he makes the hand fake, and that takes Hardy out from helping out backside. Again, Hardy had the pitch man, and he didn't help on the quarter. There's how you go from being three down to four up, and in your opponent's territory. Eight first downs for Hawaii, Illinois without one. This Travis Sims goes to the 36, and the clock winding down. This has been a Hawaii quarter. We're under four minutes. 
four yards. Last year, I did Hawaii versus Notre Dame in, in the Second islands, game. and Paul Johnson did a masterful job of adjusting his offense at halftime, and I think we've seen him do it again. He's come out, he's done a lot of different formations on balance, he's run inside and out, and the option game has the Illini defense off balance. Tenth play of the Rainbow Drive. Sims again. Short of the first down by about a yard. Howard and Shelby. Shelby. And Fred Cox well, up to make the tackle. Kevin Hardy. That is what Travis has done. He has gone over 100 yards nine times this year. That's a Hawaii record. He set 12 offensive records this year, and he looks like he's heading to the century mark again tonight, without a doubt. Well, he averaged 125 yards a game, eighth best in the National NCAA. And uh, we're going to see why he gets the ball a lot. He runs full speed. That works. Third down, two. Third down, two. Third down, two. Carter. Whoa, short. Simeon Rice. <laughs> They're sending their outside backers full speed from the outside, and they're catching that option play from the backside. Simeon Rice is lined up right here this time, and he's going to play the option coming right at him. Fake, doesn't go for it, comes down, plays off the man faking and makes the play. That's a great play. And, you know, Denny Marson told us that we don't try to coach him a lot. We just let him play with instincts, and that was an instinct play by Simeon Rice. Jason Elam is a great long-distance kicker. They're going to ask a 49-yarder of him here. It's a pick. And it is going to be, I think, short of the first down. It's going to go according to the spot. Boy, this one's close. It's going to be real close. Walter Santiago had to get it near the 30. It's going to be close enough to measure no matter what. This was definitely in range, but with a 14 to 10 lead, they decided to go for the fake right here. The Illini were not fooled. They had three people back. They played it safe, and it was pretty good defensive play on the play, but it was real close to the line. He had to get about a foot and a half from the line, and I'm, I, I think he got it. He comes said, the measurement of the night. I'll say he's that much short. Your attention, please, <laughs> Carl Little. Just because I don't Carl want to agree Little. with you. He got it. Boy, he got great eyes. You have to play that West Coast tilt <laughs> on this one. I'm 0 for 2 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you see the fake this time. Elam follows through, comes out, forces to the outside. Looked like he had some people open, but just cuts up inside, puts his head down, and really got a pretty good spot on the play. And, uh, you know, he's across the line, but he landed short of it. Not a good gamble by Wagner, and it worked. Santiago picks up the first down. He was a former high school quarterback, got recruited to Hawaii to play quarterback, so he knows how to handle it offensively, despite the fact he spends all his time on defense. 60-yard drive so far, another impressive one for Hawaii. They go back to their bread and butter guy, Sims. Carriers, Travis Sims. Sims to the 28, maybe the 27, before Kevin Hardy brought him down. Carter's got that mouthpiece hooked up in the cage the there between the lines. <laughs> so far, he hasn't forgotten to bring it down. And in second down, seven. Carter backs up the throw. In and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Brian Gordon. And Gordon should have had it. Carter took a lick. From Simeon cover, Rice. Derek Rucker. Tried to get a play, big play right here, and I think Derek Rucker, number 39, came across and just flashing right here. End of the play, you see Simeon Rice put the hit on him. Really doesn't hit him too hard. It wasn't rough in the pass on that play. But see if Rucker, to the left of your screen, doesn't come across and almost like, and I really think his hand moving across really broke the concentration and made the, the, the miss possible. Another third down situation for the Rainbows with 112 left third quarter. That's a dangerous flare pass out there. Incomplete. A little more dangerous for Derek Rucker, though, that time, because he saw the fly ball coming to the outside, and he was blocked. Remember, that was a pass thrown behind the line of scrimmage. You can block people on those lines. Well, I think we'll see the right leg of Jason Elam now. It is fourth down at seven. And watch how smooth he hits the ball. He has no effort in it, and he has plenty of length. 390 
seven career points. This would put him at the even 400 mark. And he has got it. It's always great to have a weapon with a leg like an All-American, Jason Elam. Absolutely. I bet if he plays golf, he plays it right to left because that's how he hit this one. Started it out on the right post, swung very smoothly, hardly any effort. Just knew it was going to come back in. Come on, hook, baby. We got it. Yes. Good. When Morton Anderson was out as a member of the Saints at the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, he kicked for about an hour with Jason Elam, and they say Anderson shortened up his kicking stroke a little bit. It took a little of his distance away. But over the course of the past year, and he is a, he's a good size kicker. He's about 6'1", 190, and he's got that length back to his kick. So they credit an all-pro for an All-American being a little bit better as a kicker. And there's some of the numbers. Two 395 points coming in, and now has tacked on a couple of extra points in a field goal to make it 400, and that is his 80th field goal in 101 attempts. That ain't bad. Oh. Had, obviously, he's had some block, but you know what I like most about him is the gloves. Really got the good look, the black sweatpants and the gloves. He set the kick off. Steve Fagan deep. His kicks have been high, but relatively short tonight. Fagan drops it at the eight and covers it right there. I think Steve had a little more time if he wanted to pick that up, but he did the sure thing, I guess. Yeah, he didn't exactly know how far everybody came down. You know, the ball was kicked so high that he had to play it safe. He had to feel that almost like a punt. And now Illinois will start inside its own 10-yard line. Jason Elam comes from Snellville, Georgia, all the way out to Hawaii. And, boy, they've had some good kickers in about a 10-mile radius right there. They've had Kevin Butler, Chris Gardaki, David Treadwell, and now Jason Elam. Those aren't bad kickers from one part of the state of Georgia. Illinois needs a drive for that reason right there. That graphic, 28 plays for three. The Illinois defense is tired. And they get a little breather from Jackson, who takes it across the 15-yard line. Brian Addison in on the tackle as we go down to Charlene Hawks on the sideline. The process of uh, becoming an NFL player. He's uh, got a friend who's in, in the pros. A kicker with Seattle Seahawks has been giving him some pointers. In fact, he helped him out with tryouts. He held the ball for him, so he already got a first-hand look at what it what it takes. He says that he's always looking at stats in the newspaper to see what NFL teams are looking for kickers. He told me that the three teams that appear to be looking for kickers, the Giants, the Buccaneers, and even the Chargers, he might already be on his own field. Guys? Aaron Boyer takes it. He's going to be short of the first down, and I will apologize right now. I've missed one kicker going through that whole Georgia thing, and that's John Casey in Seattle, who is a heck of a kicker and a former Georgia Bulldog, and that's the friend Charlene was talking about of Jason Elam. So there are a batch of Georgia kickers in the pro ranks. That's going to be a in this third quarter, and it has not been a good one for Illinois or a lot of Big Ten fans. They've only had about five snaps on offense. They're going to have to make up ground now. They trail by seven at the end of three. With Gary Danielson and Charlene Hawks, Brad Nessler with you from the 15th Trippy Car Rental Holiday Bowl presented by Chrysler. Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego, where Illinois trails by a touchdown, and Verduzco on third and one gets the first down out to the 20 yard line. And that first down was big, not just because of yardage and the score or anything, but just to give a rest to that defense because they have been on the field all half. It's a Hawaii rainbow third quarter without a doubt. 13 minutes they had it in that quarter, and what a year they have had. Ten wins, two losses, as we talked about. There's the numbers, total yardage this half. But yeah. Bob Wagner's team has gone from a year ago being 4-7-1. and one. And look at the turnaround, the best in Division I, a six-game improvement. Boston College next to SMU New Mexico and Wake Forest. But you turn a program around to the tune of six wins, and you've done your work. In fact, 
Chris Smeela, the defensive coordinator for the Rainbows, was talking to us the other day, Gary, and said, you know, sometimes it's a little scary. I think our guys play over their head. Well, they all do. You know, you always look at your own guys and think everybody else's guys are so much bigger and so much better, the old grass is greener type story. But, you know, these guys compete so hard, and I really think that that T-shirt that Charlene showed in the first half where they said eight and not, you know, that really fired up this football team, and you could go a long way on emotion and believing. So that was Chris Meelan you saw signaling in the defensive call to his troops who face Illinois' second and eight. Produsco completes it short of the first down to his tight end, Craig Custer. And it will bring up third down and close to two. Well, we're into the fourth quarter, Brad, and that's when this man is at his best. You can see it right there. 70, nearly 72% completions, 380 yards. And the big one, no interceptions. A lot of those touchdown passes were on the last drive. You know, we, we kiddingly talked about that uh, the Illinois offense was good in the two-minute situations. But the other 58, it was the other yeah. 58 that was the problem. And there you see two big games they won and a big tie against Michigan and what he did in the last closing moments. Verduzco's hit his last six. Tom Beck, offensive coordinator, you would assume has a running play call, but we'll find out. Third one. Play action. Verduzco on the bootleg. First down. Smart play that time. He had Custer open, but he knew the safe play was just to pick up the first down, pointed it out. Custer really helped him out by not getting hit. He picked off a linebacker on the play. They need to move the chains, and these type of plays, bootleg play, Custer slams and then comes out. Down in distance right now, and Produsco does a nice job of knowing he just gets the first down and move the chains. Produsco, the senior. Playing his final game in that orange helmet. 13.07 left, his team down by a touchdown. Now they want to go back to the air. It is almost intercepted. Zach Odom got his hands on it. Had he been able to hold on to it, it would have been about a 35-yard touchdown going the other way. Well, Zach Odom has no respect for John Wright right now. He will not move back on the play. John Wright came out of him. He didn't back up two feet. It was a perfect throw, but Odom was setting on him. He doesn't respect his speed deep, and Odom, the reason he plays defense, Brad, is he can't catch the ball a lick because that one went right <laughs> through his hands. <laughs> Zach had two interceptions on the season, smiling for that shot. I doubt he's got a crease of a grin on that face after missing that one. Yeah, it was a great play in his part. Really well. Second and ten. Four receivers. They want to throw double ten. to right. Right wants to throw back to Verduzco, and Verduzco might want to throw, but he can't handle it. He should pick it up. It could be a lateral. Well, this might be a touchdown. Darryl Green. They're going to blow it dead. They're going to bring it back. Darryl Green thinks he's got six, but our referee... Says that it's going to be down at the 22-yard line, but it may indeed be the Hawaii ball. I think that's the signal we got. We're calling it a muffed lateral that can't be advanced. Right. I'm not so sure it was a lateral. Obviously, on that play, you are taught on that play that if it's close, don't give the referee the opportunity to make the play. Jump on it. Here's the call. You talk about the tilt of this field. I'm not so sure about the second no, one. I'm not either. Let's see where this ball was thrown by Boyer from. No, it's John Wright from. He has the ball on the 30. He backs up now. He's on the 28-yard line, and that ball goes backwards. Yes, that was a lot. There was no doubt about the great call by the referee. Sure was a great call. Now the Illinois defense knows they've got to come up with a big play, and Travis Sims didn't get much before Dana Howard and company buried him. We talked, ironically enough, would we see a double pass from the Hawaii Rainbows? We get it from Illinois. That's right. This ball kind of sailed on him. I'm not sure he wanted to throw another lateral, but he let Produce go back a little bit. Now Jason makes a mistake. He has the ball on that ball. He knew it was supposed to be a double pass, but it ended up being two laps. Second down and eight. Carter pitches. Eddie Kaloha 
to the 15-yard line. Still three yards short of the first down. That Illini defense, you've got to feel sorry for them. They've been on the field the entire second half, it seems. And now they're asked to prevent any more Hawaii scoring because even if it's only a field goal, you got a 10-point ball game with about 10 minutes to go. Yeah, there's still plenty of time in the football game, but you're right. They, they can't afford to give them another touchdown. They need to stop here. And I wouldn't be shocked to see another option play because you've got three different people that can handle the ball. Third down three. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl presented by Chrysler is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide reservations, call 1-800-4-CARS. And by the Chrysler Corporation. In the car business, you lead, follow, or get out of the way. Well, the WAC champions pulled a wacky play, but they forgot to notify the officials. Paul Johnson looking on the offensive coordinator, so that fumble Ruski goes for not. The three points is good on the board, though, from Elam's leg, and it's 20 to 10, and it's all Hawaii in the second half. Well, actually, two big mental mistakes right there. Jason Produsco doesn't fall on the dropped fumble, which he thought was a forward pass, and they're not reporting to the official. Steve Fagan back. Elam set to kick. 11-19, a long time for... Jason Produsco and company, but now they know they need a couple of scores even to tie. Hawaii's rainbows in a big bunch before they spread out at kickoff time. Crowd really getting into it right now for the rainbows. Fagan at the one. opening out to the 25-yard line. And now we got a little extracurricular again between the Illini and the Rainbows. Illinois' offense takes over. Brad, I don't care how good your defense is. When your offense doesn't pick up first downs and move it, you're just going to be on the, on the field too long. And that's really been the story. Actually, the last two bowl games, Illinois has not scored a touchdown. And here they only have one on the board against a pretty weak and suspect defense. I mean, there's a lot of teams that have ripped this defense this year. And you, you have to expect more out of your offensive football team to beat a team like this. The Big Ten is down 10. trouble again. Across the middle of Olsen is tight end. And Olsen may have a first down. Picks up 11. He will have a first down. Dave Olsen, the junior out of Freeport, Illinois. He's not a bad tight end by any means, but Gary talked about the guy that a lot of people think is one of the better tight ends 
in the Big Ten, Ken Dilger not playing, broke his hand in a nine-on-seven drill in preparation for this bowl game. And Verdusco's numbers approaching the 200-yard mark. I would like to see Illinois start to get up to the line of scrimmage a little quicker. You're looking at a 10-minute, 11-minute football game right here. They still have to score two, tu two touchdowns to win. Or a touchdown and a field goal with a two-point play. Draw play to Fagan. He's got a first down, and he's into rainbow territory. Pick up of about 14 as we go down to Charlene Hawks with another pretty good quarterback. Brad, roaming around here on the Illinois sidelines, I ran into Illinois alum now with the Indianapolis Colts, Jeff George. And Jeff, the Illinois offense has buttered the last couple of quarters, uh, trying everything, even going with trick plays. What do they need to do? Well, they, they just need to execute more, and uh, I think throw the ball a little more. They've uh, been trying to run the ball quite a bit all game, and you got to let Verduzco take over. Career aside, back to Brad for just a second. We'll be right back to you. Uh, first down, Verduzco, they are going to let him throw. Play action going deep, John Wright. And it's intercepted by Earth. Zach Gordon going the other way for Hawaii. <laughs> Gary says he's a defensive back because of the hands. Well, he got that one. Well, when you throw them in their stomach, they're going to catch him most of the time. And Jason got a little bit too greedy this time, trying to get it all in one play. He really didn't need to do it. You know, 10 minutes is a long time when you're throwing the ball. Jeff George said they needed to throw it, but I don't know if they needed to go all the way. You see Odom, he stays with his man. The ball's right in his stomach, and we all can catch a nice play there. Watch Stuart Williams come and get a big block at the end of this one, too. Third interception of the year for Zach Odom. He missed one earlier, but that one didn't get away. And Hawaii by 10 with 10-13 left. It seems that most car rental companies go out of their way to confuse you with unpredictable rates. They're all over the place. Thrifty, on the other hand, never veers off course. To keep your rates low, we've always kept our cost low. You can use... Jason Verduzco stalking the sideline, hoping for another chance. His interception has given it back to the rainbow offense at the 24-yard line. An opening off the left side and gets out to the 30 yard line. Let's hustle back down to Charlene and Jeff. Jeff, you know Jason Verduzco well, and interceptions, trick plays aside, what do you think he has going for him and against him as the NFL draft approaches? Well, he has the experience, number one. He has the confidence in a player, and uh, he has a strong arm. So uh, I think he's going to do fine in the NFL. If he gets a shot there, a lot of people are talking Canada, but if I know Jason, uh, he wants to play the National Football League, and uh, a lot of people said he couldn't do that here, and look what he's done. So I, I think he'll be all right. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Brad? Jeff had a good year. So did the Colts. Great turnaround for them this past season. And he, of course, part of that when he wasn't injured. He saw Jeff George's numbers, too. Uh, fourth career passing at Illinois. But keep in mind, he left hey, after his junior season. I heard number one. Hey, they said they were going to pick up. Yeah, they said they were going to pick up me. <laughs> He's been doing the job out there. He's got the sticky glove. No, I'm sorry. He's <laughs> pointing to where the ring will go. That's right. Temper had a pretty good tackle on his calf there. Yeah, and he looked like he's signaling in some of the defensive calls right now, too. Third down, two. Carter, the late pitch. Jasper got the corner. The ball first down, Hawaii. And every first down is costly now to the Illinois defense. And Ty Washington could have saved the first down that time, making a tackle, but Jasper just went to the outside and kind of beat him to the outside. And of course, uh, Jasper has played quarterback. Uh, Fake to the fullback this time, pulls it out. Sims has to fall inside, expecting to get hit every play. Last second makes the pitch, and you're going to see from the outside, Washington had a play on him, but Jasper makes the first down. Out near the 42. Approaching the eight and a half minute mark. Hawaii's got things going their way. Sims to the 45, giving three more. ESPN's got college hoops for you coming up Saturday. Number 17, Spartans of Michigan State take on East Tennessee State. Our coverage begins Saturday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on ESPN. We've got 
A lot more bowl action football-wise for you right through January 2nd, and then we will really gear up the college hoops. Ten-point game with Hawaii in front, second down and seven. Illinois needs a turnover if they're going to get back in this thing. Got another yard. That's about it. Dana Howard got out there to meet him number 40. You can bet Illinois' offense chomping at the bit to get back on the field. Holosek down for Illinois. And Holosek holding his lower left leg. Yeah, kind of reaching for that. Boy, you just hope it's not the knee, and I don't Look, think it is. Looks like he's shaking the ankle around a little bit here. Ankle or the shin. Yeah, he, he, you could tell he got clipped, in a, an illegal clip by one of the players on the play, and I'm not sure it wasn't the... the running back after he made the fake coming in and clipping the guy who was trying to make the tackle. John's got eight hits tonight. Started out the season sitting out the season opener as he came back from that knee surgery Gary talked about. He was injured in the Iowa game last year and had a, a long rehab as you might guess but after missing that season opener he averaged 13 tackles a game. Now that's a linebacker. And he's making all the calls. Well, that's a I wonder if Dana Howard now will have to make the calls on defense when he's out. Shelby in for Holosek, third and five, Hawaii. Illinois needs a defensive stopper right here. Carter wants to throw. Got a man open, and has got it! And it's Derek Bridge, touchdown! and just throw a 53 yard touchdown pass to go up by 16. Well, it really was a beautiful play by Michael Carter that time. Illinois gambled, they had to get the ball back, they blitzed man-to-man -man coverage and Ty Washington just couldn't stay with him, got off balance and it was a touchdown. Mason Elam's point after right through the middle. Seven minutes, 11 seconds to go in the ball game. And now Illinois in some serious trouble. It's all rainbows this half. Kodak Film is a big favorite with UH sports fans who want to capture the action and excitement of any event in the true colors of Kodak. You'll find the fans and film at Longs. So make Longs a part of your day and capture the true colors of Hawaii with Coda Color Gold Film from Long. You always find the very best at Long's. Kodak, a proud supporter of UH Sports. Yeah, baby! As I told you at the beginning of the ball game, they don't throw often when they do. That's the guy they like to get it to. Derek Branch, one catch tonight, good for 53 yards and a touchdown. Let me show you. We talked about the receivers. This is Derek Branch right here, hidden a little bit. They fake the option back this way. That draws the man coverage. Arneson leaves the center of the field. And Ty Washington is stuck on Derek Branch. Beautiful play. He's got Rice and Hardy chasing him. The ball is underthrown, and Washington loses his balance. Big play big touchdown for Derek Branch and going to be tough for him to come back. Pressure in your face, Hardy from, from behind, Simeon Rice, six foot four in your face, throw it off balance, really didn't have much on the football, but Branch comes back for it. Big touchdown and now with a 17 point lead and seven and a half minutes to go. Carter's seventh touchdown toss of the season and on the other side, if there's any magic left to number 10's body, boy, he's going to need a whole hatful here in the next seven minutes, 11 seconds. Well, it's all different game right now. Uh, Illinois is going to have to go no huddle, and they're also now going to have to get at least one onside kick, possibly two, to have any chance to win the football game. Elam's kick, a good one. Fagan has to backpedal to the corner at the goal line. And only got to the 21. Nice coverage by the Rainbow special team. Hawaii has owned the second half tonight. And you talk about how much? How about this? 13 and 80 and a touchdown. That's 62 more yards of field goal. Another 40-yard drive and a field goal. 
74 and a touchdown on six plays the last time they had it. Yeah, let me amplify that just a little bit more. Hawaii's had the ball 16 and a half minutes so far, and they've outgained Illinois 211 to 35 in this second half. And you know, for a, 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 a suspect, and again, I say a suspect whack defensive team that a lot of people rolled up a lot of yards against, Illinois has not been able to muster any offense tonight. First and 10 for the Illini, now trailing by 17 points. Verduzco, overshot his intended receiver, Brandon Harrison. Not only is Illinois very well aware that they need 17 points even to tie, but that means they've got to have three possessions, and that alone is not too easy with seven minutes left. That's right. And they, they know that you, you're already starting to think that uh, any time that the clock is moving, we're going to have to go from the line of scrimmage. And, of course, on an incomplete pass, you can huddle up again. Verduzco has a look on second and ten. Jason will take off on his own, get what he can, and goes out of bounds a little bit short of the first down, it appears. Illinois, one of their top defenders, Holosek, out earlier shaking up. Let's find out more from Charlie Hawks on his condition. Brad, I just spoke with head trainer Al Martindale, and he uh, retaped uh, Holosek's ankle. It's a slightly sprained left ankle. They had him walk around to see how it feels. Uh, he's obviously in some pain, and he's just trying to cover it up uh, right now, as you can see. He's working it out on the sidelines, and uh, he does feel sore, but they do want to send him back in. Of course, they badly need him. Brad? They just hope they have to send him back in. That would mean their offense had gotten some points, and they were back trying to get the ball back again. That's a long ways from now. It's third and two, Illinois. Fagan. Very close. And you can hear some of the Hawaii players say, no way, meeting the spot. Yeah, Brad, let's see if you can go no, for the hat trick here. You got this this one. I think they got it this you time. You think you got it? Well, I'm just, you know, I'm, you know, it's like going against Corso. You just say, take the opposite <laughs> way. <laughs> but I'll admit when I made a mistake. <laughs> let's see. They bring the chains from the far side. Well, we, we need a real good close, because I'm not so sure the last couple times. Oh, I like we that angle. We want proof this time. Yeah, that's a great angle. The field's tilted that way. It's like a bad pool table. First down. How about that? You got it. It's just, you know, it's coming to be your time of the night, though. Yeah. Are you yeah. You're just getting late. <laughs> <laughs> getting late for Illinois, too. Yeah, 639. They're, they really need more than three play first downs right now. That took them three plays to pick it up and just barely. And Hawaii did a nice job of keeping them in bounds. They're going to start the clock, and I'm surprised that Illinois isn't at the line of scrimmage. It's going to cost them another 25 seconds to snap the ball. They do not have time to be burning like this. And remember, they do not, do not have a deep ball threat. With all due respect to Klein and Wright, Fagan a little screen pass has to do most of it himself that would have set up quite the way you want to draw it up maybe got three yards they're just not getting enough chunks of yardage they need to throw the ball more downfield you have to risk interceptions at this time of the game the last time the rainbows were in a bowl game was 1989 and michigan state just powdered them boy they're trying to return the favor to the big ten here tonight deep middle and he's got a man open it's fine and Jim got it to midfield. In fact, he has it to the 49-yard line, a 17-yard pickup. And that's the type of chunks of yardage they have to eat up right here. They need to score with, you know, under maybe about uh, under four minutes, between three and four minutes. So they should look at this as a minute and a half drive right here to have any chance in this football game. They are set now as the chains are set. Look at this one off quickly from the shotgun. Produce go in the flat. Nice open field hit on Boyer. Put on by Demetrius Henderson, the left cornerback. Yeah, a very important play again because it keeps the clock moving for Hawaii and it doesn't get out of bounds. Second down, seven. They throw the quick out to try to get the first down and get out of bounds. And Shane Fisher makes the grab, but he doesn't get the first down. Yeah, he didn't run the pattern deep enough that time, and uh, that, that's a big problem because he only picked up a couple he yards. He said go deeper. That's yeah, what he I, said to him as he came back. 
Jasper Strong will come in with a play for Tom Beck. Strong had four catches in the first half. He does have a little bit of speed. Let's see if they try to go to him, number one. Third down at five. 5.23 to go. Two down territory here for Illinois. And they whistle this one dead. I think they had a delay again. And if so, it's going to be third down and almost 10. They just they couldn't pull the trigger. The on the play they wanted the to call. This is third down. That's an embarrassing situation for a football team when you're put down by 17 points with five and a half minutes to go. Relatively few penalties in the game. That's only the sixth one of the night. When I saw Lou Tepper out jogging this morning, he looked a little happier than he does right now. <laughs> Probably because he just started his job. <laughs> <laughs> I was finishing. <laughs> Verdusco completes it to Strong. His forward progress is going to have a first down for the Illini at the 36-yard line. Tackle number 22, Ryan Anderson. You can really see the arm strength that Jason Verdusco has. He has to take a deep drop because of his slight the stature of being under six feet, you know, five nine-ish, I guess. He does have the strong arm to get it there on his crossing pass. Once he takes a snap with the shotgun and then drops, he's way back there. Now he's going to take off on his own. Jason Verduzco on the ball carrier. Verduzco to the 28. Walter Santiago, Junior Tagawai in on the tackle. Verduzco trying to set his troops up at the line as the clock has worked its way to an even five minutes. That's the timeout situation left. Illinois has got their full complement. Yeah. Illinois is very tired right now. Much more energy to rush the passer than it is to protect the passer. And they're going to take a timeout. Yep, rainbows are dragging just a little bit. Must be this cool weather in San Diego. <laughs> we'll take a break with them. With five minutes left, it's 27 to 10, Hawaii. That's why he's second time Probably a wise timeout taken by Hawaii. They're in command up by 17, and their defense has been backpedaling here the last five minutes against the <laughs> Illinois offense in need of points in a hurry. What must be running through the mind and the stomach of that coach, knowing that 11th win is only five minutes away and maybe some due respect to his football team? Well, I think he's earned it through the whole year, not just this football game, and it would be a shame to have to if he had lost this game to have everything erased by just one game but you know with this win it's just going to attract more people to going out there and looking at this program whack coach of the year twice including this season and his troops try to win the thrifty car rentals 15 holiday bowl four wide outs for Verduzco and he gets the first down himself but now the clock will run oh, after they move the sticks as Jason tumbles to, to the 18 yard line See, that's one of the advantages of the college two-minute offense as com uh, compared to the pro game. That's not a great play for a pro two-minute offense, but in college, with the stoppage of the clock after a first down, it's a very heady play. And now it starts again, as you heard the whistle. First down, Verduzco looked to the end zone, and now goes to the corner. John Wright, touchdown! The second hookup of the night. Verduce going to right. But is it way too late? Well, it's late. I don't know if it's way too yet, but I know what we're going to see. We're going to see an onside kick right after it. I don't really think they need to go for two here. One point's as good as two points. You see right, number five, he's going to come out. He's not the... Uh, first receiver but when he sees Verduce go scramble he goes deep and watch how perfectly this ball is thrown high where just right has a chance to catch it and now right will hold for Chris Richardson trying to cut it to a 10 point game and does with 442 left John Wright, you can see on a bad wheel, limping to the sideline, but he's given Illinois at least some new hope with 4.42 left. And the way these past holiday bowls have gone, keep in mind, if we get a recovered onside kick, 
don't go any place because you never quite know what could happen in the next four minutes, 42 seconds. That plus number 10 still in this football game if they get it back. You see, he tries to go down the middle of the field, but when he scrambles, he sees right. And watch how perfectly he throws this ball. Bad angle last time by Addison, and really a nice play by Jason Verduzco. He's been tough tonight as he's been tough through his career. John Wright, two touchdown grabs. And now the, you know that uh, Illinois is going to come out and try to get it right back for their quarterback, Chris Richardson. When he was in high school, wasn't getting a lot of attention from the major schools as far as being a kicker, so he put a video together of himself to try to shop himself around a little bit. I don't know if on that video he had onside kicks included. <laughs> but well, Illinois liked enough of what they saw. They, actually, the only tape he got out was to the University of Illinois, and he took that scholarship and ran with it. But right now, he needs one to go about 10 yards on a goofy hop. I don't think he's going to do it. The way he's lined up in the middle of the field, I think he's going to kick long. You're right. High and sh short. Well, the strategy Lou Tepper's trying to use right here is he does have three timeouts left. So he has to burn them right now on defense because offensively you can control a little bit with first downs and incomplete passes. So they need to stop them in three plays and they need to use their timeouts and still get the ball back. And then obviously they're going to onside kick after the next touchdown. Of course, that's John Wright right there. You saw him flipping off and he's getting retaped. He wants to get a spike back on and have another chance on offense. And his head coach obviously feels the same way. If Hawaii can put a couple first downs together, though, it's not going to matter much. Here's Carter. He got four Carter to the 35. The folk, he ran right by the quarterback that time. You see the timeout signal. They're going to have to do it every time. They need some stops. So Denny Marson, defensive coordinator, trying to get the time on call, did get it, and we'll be right back after this. demand serious men. Hard work is the reward for hard work. Tenacity, gumption, discipline. This is Denny Marson right here, Brad. See the score, he called timeout. Oh, oh. That's exactly how defensive coordinator is supposed to look. Michael Carter was a little shaken up on the last play for Hawaii. And he pitches. Jasper might have a first down. Let's see. Yeah, I Looked think, like he got it at the 42-yard line. I think he has a first down, but by going out of bounds here, he gave Illinois one more chance to get a couple stops and be in this football game. Illinois with two timeouts left, but now Hawaii's got a first down with a 10-point lead, 419 left. With Carter limping a little bit right here, you're probably going to see the ball in into the fullback or the quick pitch off the option that probably designate the play. I think you'll see Travis Sims holding this ball right here. Sims is over 100 yards, by the way, for the 10th time this year. And here he comes for the 47. He does a couple things. You know he's going to get some positive yards, but he also is going to keep the ball between the sidelines so that they don't get out of bounds. Stop the clock and force Illinois to use another timeout. Another timeout, Illinois. What did Denny Marston tell us? This is the 18th bowl game he's been involved in, something like that. 27-17 with 4-11 left. And it started off with Illinois on the board first as they went in front on John Wright's 14-yard touchdown reception from Jason Verduzco to lead 7-0. But Hawaii came back with an answer, a long drive, and Sims took it in from 6 to even it up. Richardson tacked on a field goal late in the first half, 10-3 at that point, and then Sims came back. Hawaii has never looked back. 14-10 with his second touchdown of the night. Jason Elam hit a 45-yarder to make it a touchdown game, and then came back and hit another field goal of 38. It was a 20-10 margin in the fourth quarter. Hawaii at Derrick Branch open from 53 yards, 27-10, and Illinois moments ago came back with a touchdown. John Wright is second of the night. 
27-17. But now, the Rainbows of Hawaii, who came in averaging 33 points a game, have 27 on the board against what is normally a pretty stingy Illinois defense. They've got the ball and the clock and everything in their favor. Well, it's imperative that he get a quick stop right here and another quick timeout and then hope on third down that they run the option play wide and force him out of bounds and stop him short. You talked earlier, Gary, about the fact that Illinois led college football and fumble recoveries with 20. Boy, they sure would love to pick up another one here in the next minute or so. And that's been the difference in this football game. When Hawaii played Michigan State and was blown out in that football game, they just were laying it on the carpet too many times. This time they've taken care of it. They've had some interceptions, but no fumbles. Second down, five. in the right spot. He has to use Hawaii's last time out. Yeah, very smart play that time. Jasper, I think, was lined up in the wrong spot. Yeah, he wanted to make a, a check with me call at the line of scrimmage and change the play, and there was a little confusion, so he just let it run down and took a timeout. Sports Center's about four minutes and 11 seconds away, and this is some of the stuff we'll be talking about on Sports Center. Giants making some changes. Gene Stallings interview. His... Uh, Club, of course, unbeat, number two in the country, playing Miami for all the marbles. And Jordan feels the heat. All that more at Sports Center after the game. Paul Johnson, the offensive coordinator on the left. The architect of this offense. We've asked him how much it has stayed the same from when he used to run it and brought it to Hawaii. And he said it has really progressed and evolved and mostly in the formations. We want to say a, a special hello, though, to uh, Susie Johnson, Paul's wife, who is expecting their first child in about three weeks. And he said the only problem with having a bowl game on the mainland is she couldn't make that flight. Right. <laughs> so if she's walked back home tonight, we wish you the best with your new upcoming family. And I'll tell you, your husband's going to be happy in about four minutes. Yeah, he's practicing right now being sleepy. Yep. When he has that baby, he's <laughs> what he's going to be doing for about six months. <laughs> There will be no more sleep then. <laughs> That's when you go out recruiting That's as right. far away as you can. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. I'd like to stay on help you, but... Uh, <laughs> but we need a linebacker. That's right. Yeah. Second down at five. Verdusco on the sideline wants another chance, obviously. But it's going to maybe take a turnover or something by the defense to do that for him. Timeout. We need a timeout quickly. It will be a third down and two coming up. I, I, I don't quite understand what's the the thought here of slowing it down. They knew after that play, if they stopped him short of a first down, they had to call timeout. So the biggest third down conversion situation of the night is at hand. Well, I, now the only only possibility right here for Hawaii, I don't know, I, maybe I'm too conservative here, but I think they've got two things they can do, punt the ball or punt the ball, but they may throw it up. A little of an idea of lining up there and trying to draw Illinois off sides and then punting the ball after a five-yard penalty. Michael Carter on that headset, the Hawaii quarterback, trying to talk to Gary and I, trying to talk us into naming him the thrifty car rental holiday bowl most valuable player. And uh, Mikey, put the headset down because you won that award. Well, do we get to change our mind if by some miracle that uh, they come back, Illinois comes back and wins this game? He had a great game. Michael Carter, trigger man of this football game. We said the quarterback was key. You see what he did? He didn't have great completion percentage, but in this offense, you don't need it when you throw for 115 yards and engineer all the pitches and handoffs to the fullbacks. A great game by Michael Carter. Those six completions, all good for key first downs and one of 53-yard toss to Derek Branch that really has sort of put this one away for Hawaii. Well, I, I, I hope the play is they're going to try to draw Illinois offside because if they go for it and don't make it, that'll shorten the clock and really put Illinois back in the game. They only have 50 yards to go for a touchdown. It's a third down and one. Man, we need to, we need to get it going here. Travis Sims doesn't lose much yardage. He's lost five yards all season on all the carries he's had. He has two touchdowns tonight. And Carter keeps it. May have gotten it himself. Wow. Boy, that is gutsy. That's a gutsy. He made the play, and they could have tackled him for a loss there. Holosek and Artisan were draped all over him, but 
at 212 pounds or more quarterback just picked up the biggest first down of the year for him. Well, I guess that's why I'm sitting up here, because I, I thought that that for sure would be a punt situation. Carter right now is going to fake it to Sims. You're going to see him pull it out. He pops out wide. First, Howard gets held on the play right there from the inside. Steve Stefanski holds Howard, or he would have made the play. First down, Hawaii. Three and a half to go. Sims got tagged at the 45. Aaron Shelby and Chad Kofer in on the hit. Watch out close one more time. Dana Howard could have came to making this play. And tell me if he doesn't get hold, held right here by number 73, Stefanski. Right side of the screen. Howard's going to come in, makes the play right here, and watch this big hand come from the backside. Whoop, right there, and grab him, throwing off balance. And that's what was enough to get... Carter outside and make the play. That was Fonseca, the tackle for Hawaii that got away with one. Boy, there's a collision. Hoagie's in the middle of that. Sims will feel that one tomorrow. Yeah, it's a little too late, though, because with uh, no timeouts now, this thing's going to get under a minute before they get the ball back. You know, this has got to be tough. You know, not so much for Luke Tepper. He's uh, moving his team forward. He said he's had a great recruiting class, but it has to be tough for the Big Ten. It has been a down year for the Big Ten. This is the one bowl where they thought they could come in and win. I mean, they, they've owned the Holiday Bowl, basically, and now they come out here, lose this game, and, of course, Ohio State and Michigan are going to have a really tough football game. They're going to be playing in another two bowl game. Really a down year for the Big Ten. The Big Ten's been 4-1-1 and one in this bowl game, and that's about to become 4-2-1. and one. Carter. He'll keep it again, and takes it to the 34-yard line, another Hawaii first down. Shelby and Sidari get on the tackle, but Michael Carter, our player of the game, a spark plug quarterback and a spark plug fullback. A couple of guys that uh, a lot of people would look at and say, well, they're too short, they're not quite fast enough, but that guy and the quarterback have made this offense work tonight for Hawaii. Yeah, and the key to Hawaii's game, Brad, has been third down conversions. 13 out of 20 in the game. That man right there, 112 yards inside. But the quarterback has been pulling off the plays with the option and the passes. 13 for 20 is good stats, and that'll move the first down. And that's really been the story of the football game. Sims again. And let's go down to Charlene Hawks. the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii inciting their crowd and a big crowd showed up all clad in green and they're making some noise now because they know the WAC champions are about to gain some respect and, and also their 11th victory of the season and everybody in the WAC is excited about this remember Fresno State knocks off USC they powdered USC last night. and now Hawaii comes in five teams in bowl games Carter Carter's got it down. And we've talked about how good Bob Wagner feels. So I'll tell you what, number three feels pretty good, too, because the folks in Hawaii were sort of booing this young man earlier in the season. They wanted Ivan Jasper, who's got maybe a livelier arm, to be the quarterback. You live through all of that, and then you rush for 103 yards, throw a touchdown pass, win the MVP in the thrifty car rental holiday bowl, and get a face full of turf. <laughs> He'll be happy, though, in the next 30 seconds. He has had some kind of season. Well, they had to come a long way to see it. That's not a short flight, but it's gonna be pretty sweet in about one more play. We've had quite a season with our gang and wanna thank the folks. Dan Regan, our director. Jeff Himes, our producer, up here in the booth. Pat McGrath on stats. Clint Deans, our spotter. Gary Danielson and I finish our first year together, and it's been fun, Gerald. Great. Let's do it again next year. 27-17. The WAC champion Rainbows win the Thrifty Car Rental Holiday Bowl at four. Charlene Hawks and Gary Danielson. I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from San Diego. Let's take it to Sports Center.
To start popping up on lists like that around the country, Hawaii's Bob Wagner. His rainbows were penciled in to finish eighth in the nine-team Western Athletic Conference, but instead finished in a tie for first with its best season ever, 11-2 and two with its Holiday Bowl win over Illinois. And Bob Wagner joins us here in our Atlanta studio, and we know you didn't drive all the way in from Honolulu just to be with us. The coaches' convention is meeting here. Uh, what are some of the hot topics and and are there any other names on that USC list? Uh, I have no idea. We're just trying to make Hawaii as good a program as we can. There's a lot of room for improvement there. On USC, when you see something like that happen, what kind of emotions start follow, start going through you? Well, it's, it's disappointing. Uh, I don't know Larry Smith well, but I know he's a quality person. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, USC has uh, taken strides to uh, make their admission standards tougher for student athletes. And those are some of the things that get lost in the shuffle. People talk about graduation rates and so on and so forth, and the bottom line is you still get fired for losing. Anyone contacted you about that job or any other? I, uh, not to my knowledge. All right, well, let's get talking about your football team. 11-2 and two finish, a win over Illinois. Michigan wasn't able to beat Illinois, but you guys were. We, uh, we sure were. Played, played an excellent second half. Uh, I, I felt reasonably good at halftime. We had not played well at halftime. You know, the first half, give Illinois certainly their share of credit, but... Uh, I knew we could play a lot better than we did the second half and you know had a, a 27 to 10 lead and they, they did a great job with their one minute offense and, and got a score late in the game but we were able to possess the ball and, and keep it away from them and uh, again the Illinois beat Ohio State and uh, as you said Michigan tied them and both those games were at Michigan and, and at Ohio State so we're very proud of that win. All right. Well, you've helped make Hawaii more than just a vacation destination. Some big plays from that ball game. Daryl Green's fumble recovery is certainly as big as any one when you guys were only leading by seven in the fourth uh, fourth quarter. Well, we just uh, you know we were trying to get some things going here, and we we're in a, a pressure situation, which really helped us. I think they were expecting zone, and uh, we we forced them to hurry some things. And our guys very alertly kept playing the ball. They did not hear a whistle, and they played the ball. Uh, the officials called it correctly. You can't advance in a lateral. But it was our football and a, a big play to get us uh, really cranking. And how about the fumble, Ruski? You pulled it off, but it got called back because you failed to notify the officials. Are you still hot about this? Well, I'm hot at <laughs> I'm hot at uh, it ourselves. I mean, I'm the head coach. I'm responsible. We all also have some other people involved in that. And I saw that he had not uh, notified the uh, the officials, so I was trying to get a timeout call so so that uh, we wouldn't run the play and. Because that was uh, what I was afraid would happen and did. Well, we're going to score, and then maybe they get a chance to get some momentum out of a positive play on our part. And we got to see Michael Carter hit Derek Branch there for a 53-yard touchdown. Your offense is really the thing that has put you on the map. You do some things that no other school does. Well, we brought in uh, Paul Johnson and Mike Seawalk from Georgia Southern uh, to put this offense in. We had played over the years some outstanding defense and kicked the ball well at Hawaii. And I felt to take it to another step, we needed to do something different, something innovative offensively. And it's, it's been a real positive force. Uh, so that against an Illinois football team, we can score points. Uh, usually we're outsized every game, but uh, we, we have our share of good athletes. They play extremely hard, and we, we kick the ball well. We play uh, resourceful defense, and we were second in the nation in rushing offense. Well, I know it pains coaches to see what happened to Larry Smith at USC, but how about what's happened to Gene Stallings at Alabama and reaching the pinnacle of college football? What are some of the things that go through you when you see such a good guy get such a good thing? Well, just just fantastic. Uh, you know, Gene had been in the NFL and whatnot, uh, and to come back to Alabama where it's not easy because, uh, you know, in, in the shadow of Bear Bryant, and to come out and win a national championship is certainly great for him, great for that program. All right, final coaches poll of the season. Your team, 11-2, and two, but still only 20th in that poll. Would you like to see a college football playoff? I, I think the, uh, what they should have is two, uh, three games after the bowl games. Uh, I think the NCAA should certify the, the top 32 teams for the 16 bowls and then decide where they go. And then, uh, you know, have uh, semifinals and finals after the bowls, eliminate the first two games of the season, the kickoff classic, take the money you generate from the, the, uh, the postseason play and make it up for those the charities or whatnot and, and organizations and you're only adding one college football game and I think all the bowl games there'd be a lot more bowl games or would be more significant all right well, we appreciate your time here this morning congratulations on a great year and play earlier than Saturday night so the rest of the country can see you we'll try Paul. <laughs> all right thank you very much Hawaii's Bob Wagner basketball will be next as college coaches just to get your